Yeah. Like, okay. All right. Okay. Amy Riley. Amy. Well, how do we explain this to people who might not know what's going on? <laughs> if you see us on YouTube, you'll see the wildest thing you've ever seen in your life, right? <laughs> we look very professional, um, Hollywood, uh, ready to go. It's. I mean, you're going to think that Amy and I, I... Well, first of all, I guess go on YouTube and look at where the hell Amy and I are. You're going to be stunned beyond belief. But if you're just listening to the audio, you might be being... You might be like, wait, Amy and Riley sound much better. Do you think we do? <laughs> I hope so. Okay. Um... If you follow us on Instagram, et cetera, you saw that on uh, Wednesday night we had a, a disastrous uh, technical error with our microphones um, where our microphone just decided not to work and it was too late at night to find a new one. So we delayed. So you're getting this Friday morning instead of Thursday morning. Um, and then Riley came over again on Thursday and I had bought a new microphone at Best Buy and it turns out that you would think in 2024 Best Buy would have a great selection of microphones, no. but they only had one kind that is much too sensitive to use in my apartment, which is particularly empty right now because I just moved in, quite echoey. Yeah. Um, Riley's noise was coming in on my mic. It sounded like absolute trash. Um, so I called my friend David, who I go way back with, who operates a studio in Hollywood, and he said... We should come on over. And so now we look very professional. It, I mean, I can't even say there. I, I don't want to say where the studio is specifically, <laughs> but it's in the heart of Hollywood. I felt like Amy and I were in entourage for a second. And then we got to this gate and it has this beautiful, beautiful. Is it saying too much to say what animal is on it? I'll just say turtles. Beautiful, beautiful turtles. And then the gate opened like heaven's gates. And then it's we're in this this beautiful studio. So I want to I want to thank David up front. Yeah. I don't think he's listening now, but <laughs> we have like an audio engineer. Yeah, he specifically told us he's gonna turn down the audio on his end because he hasn't watched this week's Vanderpump Rules yet, and he has to wait for his fiance to watch it because he's not allowed to spoil it. Um, I'll also say that the reason I thought of him was because he texted me like a week ago, uh, telling me that he was listening to the podcast because he's watching for the first time. And he revealed that he did the score to Lisa's, uh, dog torture documentary, the road to Yulin. Yes. And you said that you go, you go, he scored road to Yulin. And I go, I'm sorry, Amy. I, it was right after my mic blew out in your house and I didn't have any cognitive capacity. And you go, the Lisa <laughs> documentary that she did where she, sh it was like the screening that she did to show off what well, it, it's, They're it's ending um, the dog meat trade. Yeah, and it's one of the they sh they barely want to show it if I remember correctly. It's on Beverly Hills, right? It's not yeah. on Vanderpump. I would love to hear David's bu beautiful music, but I don't think I could ever watch that. I don't movie. think so either. It's horrific. It's about e is it about eating dogs? Yeah, there's like a dog meat market in Asia that she, which I think, if I recall correctly, under the Biden administration, they brought to a halt. He said no more. You got to give him credit for that. Biden, <laughs> uh, we don't ever like to get political on here, but if you stop the dog meat trade officially, I'm all in. That's great. Feeling Joe Biden. Feel, what was that? Oh, was that, um, is that the Feeling new campaign? Feeling Giovanni. Oh, I like that. Um, okay. Um, so, so yeah, anyways, it was kismet because David had just reached out to me. He had the Lisa connection. He said that when he did that project for her, she took him to pump with Ken and Pandy and that there was a dog on the dinner table and he was very confused because he didn't even know who she was and that it was a magical moment and um, it brought him to mind and he really brought us out. So thank you, David. And hopefully we sound better than we've ever sounded and our video looks great and I, I we mean, have to make this episode good. Uh, I know there's so much pressure now because I mean, well, anyway, we were going to do a good job. I for, This is kind of like, what I keep thinking is that this is what it must be like when you get that beautiful, beautiful podcast studio money. You know, <laughs> can like you imagine. No, the silence in this room is deafening. It's, like I can hear how quiet it is in here. I can barely. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I can hear you. I can for sure hear you. But it's. I, I mean, anyway, okay, we got to we'll, let's move forward. But just so you know, Amy and I are floored beyond belief that we're at this beautiful, beautiful <laughs> recording studio. It's never happened in our life. And this is just, you know, it's fun. We just want to take it all in. <laughs> this is like, let's like 
take this in as a um, <laughs> the secret moment. Uh, I was just watching 30 Rock and Jenna calls it secreting um, when you practice the secret. Oh, oh, like to envision your future, right? <laughs> yeah. So this is it. Take it all in. <laughs> There's, I mean, there is some... <laughs> There, there is some truth to the fact that you and I were blowing out mics and we were getting at our wits end and I couldn't function at all today, barely. And then the fact that you had this beautiful connection to David and he had this wonderful, what's this called? Recording studio. <laughs> I mean, there is something to that. Yeah. And then from now on, I mean, obviously it's going to be pure shit when we have to leave this place, but this could be the future. When God closes a door, he opens a window. That is amazing. <laughs> I, that is so amazing that God would do something like that. This is also like, I, I, I'm i kind of like, we've been riding high also ever since we got bestowed upon us those beautiful Vanderpump Villa gifts. You remember it's last true. week? I think we got upgraded on a spiritual level at that moment. And the universe was like, you can't wear those parachute robes and record on that shitty ass equipment anymore <laughs> i think there's something to that and that's why my mic blew out um i wanted to ask you have you been sort of reveling in that stuff from that box that we got yes like the rose spray <laughs> yeah i haven't cracked open the spray yet um which i should but i just moved into a new apartment on monday and i just gleefully hung the robe on the hook uh for the first time and uh put my little potpourri the Provence lavender arrangement is up in my new place so it's christened um but yeah how about you yeah so I broke into the macaroons did you eat those yet <laughs> not yet they were real they're really good okay. I wore the parachute robe I sprayed the rose spray around the room and it felt like I mean it's a good smelling spray I like <laughs> I forgot you can't what... deny it I can't deny. And then I don't know. I haven't opened that other. I mean, no, people might not care about all the gifts that he, <laughs> <laughs> they, they do. Received. Everyone was thrilled yeah. on our behalf. What's that one that has the the like the French words on it that has like a map on it in black oh, and white? The, I haven't um, opened that yet. Yeah, that was diptyque, um, like soap and lotion, oh. which I haven't opened yet either. But they always slay. So I was going to say, you know, just as a caveat to our discussion, if we do talk about Vanderpump Villa, obviously Amy and I are not going to be able to properly well, like. <laughs> You have to factor in that we just got bestowed like beautiful, beautiful gifts. Yeah. So just think about that whenever we say anything positive about Vanderpump Villa. Yeah. And if you're asking like, oh, you know, why didn't they say anything critically about Vanderpump Villa? I mean, you obviously know the answer. Yeah. Right. Um, the only thing I will say honestly and up top um, before we get into everything is that um, Lisa almost immediately uses what we call the F slur. I, um, you sent it to me. Uh, you said Lisa just dropped a huge uh, F slur. And for those who don't who don't listen to Turtle Time often, and you might be only want to listen to us now, F slur for us, like Amy just said. Can I? Should I just say it? No, I shouldn't. Okay, you you said it once, but anyway, I'll just I'll spell it, and then if you don't want to hear it spelled, close your Beep. ears. Yeah, yeah, close your ears. F A R T. And I thought when you said it, I couldn't imagine a world where. Lisa said that. Yeah. And it's within the first five seconds. Yeah. She goes, Puffy. Did you just be? I think that they should have bleeped it out. Um, <laughs> it was a little bit uh, demystifying for me to hear Lisa say that. Yeah, because I saw her about to form that sentence and I was like, how is she going to phrase it? Like, Oof. what does Lisa say? And then it was the worst possible option. And her accent changes. It drops to American. <laughs> she went go she went from British yeah, like and she hard did, hard R. tea and it was I'll be on. Okay, now I'll be She's like, Puffy, did you just rip ass? Yeah, she should have <laughs> said anything like that. Um did you yeah. Well I, I, I honestly I did think <laughs> that she was gonna use use some British euphemism. Do you think that she's been waiting for the Hulu like she's been wanting to say a hard <laughs> F on Bravo, and they said, Lisa, you can never say that. It demystifies you. So the minute she got on Hulu, she goes, I'm going to do the one thing that has... It was giving Peacock um, extended and uncensored. Yeah, yeah. It almost, it felt like there's a kind of a, uh, there's a, like, there's this old saying where uh, David Chase didn't want, he said no one could ever film the back of an actor's head on Sopranos. He absolutely hated it. He said no shot can have the back of someone's head. And then the minute Matthew Weiner did Mad Men, he goes, I'm going to fuck authority. I'm going to 
I filmed the back of Don Draper's head. And that was like the first shot. It was like a fuck you to David Chase. Oh, wow. Like finally he was unencumbered with the rules. So maybe Lisa had been, sorry to go on so long, but maybe she had been sort of prevented from dropping a huge F-bomb. Maybe so. And, okay. So, well, let's just, you want to, you want to yeah. talk about Vanderpump Villa overall because we'll never get back to it or you want to, you want to. Yeah, let's do quick, quick okay. run through because we have a lot to cover. Right. Um, I'll also preemptively say that due to the circumstances and us wanting to honor David's time, um, we did rush over here before we watched Summer House. So you will have to do the Summer House challenge this week. I just want to say that up top. But I am very excited to watch that episode because on Instagram, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, So yeah, Summer House commentary next week. Yes. Um, But Vanderpump Villa. So it's giving below deck. Yes. Um, But it's giving below deck where the people don't feel like they have to keep their jobs and yeah. none of them are good at their jobs. Right. So it'd be like if Below Deck had a really bad crew that didn't care about getting fired <laughs> and didn't do any of their jobs well. Right. And also was more <laughs> incentivized to have dramatic relationships with each other and not really care about the guests. Right. Yeah, the guests seem very um, tacked on, but it does appear... It, the thing that feels so below deck about it is that the guests appear to change every week. Yes. Like they swap out. Um, but yeah, it appears that it, at least one of them, if not more or most, have a drinking problem. And there's like a couple who are like on again, off again that yeah. are on the staff. Yeah. Well, I felt like the drinking was like, I, to me, it felt like, and I, you know, I'm not going to be too mean, obviously, because you and I are completely paid for by Vanderpump Villa, you know, Hulu money. But it felt to me like they think that they know that they're on a reality show, almost like The Bachelor, and mm-hmm. they're treating each other and like doing things like that this doesn't really matter. Anything that they do on this show doesn't matter. So like that's why I thought that they were like chugging liquor because they're like, we're nervous. We're on reality TV. And also we can't get fired. Like this isn't none of this matters. Yeah. So I wish Lisa would have been like we, I actually want to make a good experience for the guests, and I don't care about your squabbling and relationship shit. Like, she should have never hired people that had been in a relationship before. But she, like, she couldn't not have the Vanderpump Rules aspect to it, where she wanted messy relationships. Yeah. But I just wish that they cared more about actually getting fired <laughs> and actually treating the guests well, because that's what makes Below Deck good. Right. They have to really ship up while the guests are on there. Right. And then they, and get they have to... real skills. Yes. Like they can tie ropes and, you know, yeah. do crazy and, stuff. Yeah. And, and and I'll be fully honest with a little bit of caveat of knowing that, you know, you and I are never going to say anything bad. I thought the casting needed some work. Mm-hmm. I wasn't too drawn to anybody immediately. Mm-hmm. And we already had to like start hearing about their relationships and stuff. And I was just like, I don't really care yet. I wish yeah. they would have proved themselves more before they started screaming at each other and we learned <laughs> that they had been cheating on each other and all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. It is a nice setting, though. Like, I would love to go there. Me too. Um, but yeah, it very much seems like... Um, I did watch a video. Was it on Architectural Digest? She did, like, a tour of... Uh, what's it called? Uh, Rosabelle... Oh, yeah. Chateau what, Rosa- Chateau. Yeah. I was going to say Casa Rosabelle. She showed um, that off. Yeah. And a lot of it had been, I think it was a lot of um, remainder stuff from Pump, like chandeliers and candelabras and stuff she, like that. She shipped them out. She Wow. She yeah. brought that stuff. That's interesting. Um, I mean. I mean, I, I would say it's kind of like a fun, like, watch while you're drinking and like shouting and hooting like it's kind of like were you drinking and shouting and hooting (laughs) when you watched it i wished that i was like i think it'd be fun if you had friends over to watch vanderpump or summer house or something Mm -hmm. like that and you put that on after and you're all just kind of like you know having a good time maybe not totally paying attention kind of just like you know yeah, a little more casual viewing I did miss a little bit of the Bravo sheen on Lisa a little bit. I I felt like she was a little adrift in this new environment. Like when she, I I was, I was feeling like we were getting Lisa moments that she would have, that would have never been captured on Bravo, but in a bad way. Like Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted that Bravo shine on Lisa again. Like she felt, I, I don't know. It felt a little off. It felt like Lisa maybe either had too much control over this project or that Bravo had been doing her, favors a lot it, with with you know the bravo edit and mm-hmm. she felt a little off kilter mm-hmm. i thought and um but i 
reserve the right to completely change my mind. I only watched two full episodes. Oh, you did? Yeah. I only watched the first. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll keep peeping it uh, due to the gifts. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely gift. Uh, it's definitely because we got gifts. I will definitely watch every single minute of it. And I respect that Lisa. I want. I want Lisa to have as many shows as she can have. And yeah, I mean, is. she must be amazing at doing a pitch because they have spent what appears to be millions of dollars um, promoting it across town. I know it's. It has a lot of marketing behind it. And they gave us, I mean, we they sent us the receipt of how much they gave us in <laughs> gifts. We were half the marketing budget. So <laughs> Just turtle time. Yeah. So, okay, well, so that's, um, I mean, that's a good Vanderpump Villa yeah. little. I know that there was some other Vanderpump-centric news as well. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about, well, first, I haven't talked to you about this at all in real life. And I wanted to talk to you about. Well, there was a little bit of Jeremy Maddox stuff that I thought was interesting. Yes. He's he like so the thing that I saw that was interesting to me was that he got engaged mm-hmm. to his uh significant other and Sheena was the one who did the reveal. It, did you see that Instagram? Yeah. Where it was like it was Sheena and he was in the kitchen and it was it was like Sheena's story and she, and it was like she said yes to Jeremy. And they were popping and he, a bottle. Yeah, they were popping a bottle and I was just like it I I was just like, is Ariana not a part of his life at all right now? And he just had one of the biggest moments of his life, but they're estranged. So then he kind of needed like someone else to be there to celebrate this huge moment in the Vanderpump Rules universe. And Sheena's like almost taking on Ariana duties for Jeremy. It kind of made me sad. It made me sad. Yeah. I checked Ariana's story um, right after to see if there was any celebration or comment there and I did not see it um and it's and then she posted with Sheena posted with him again like the day after or a couple days later and it's feeling like I'm like I was talking to my friends about it and we were like okay on one hand you could say it's nice because she's known him for probably 15 years or something like yes a long time so you could say it's nice that she is supporting him or like still friendly with him after all these years um, because I'm sure they had like a sort of brother sister relationship after all this time. On the other hand, you could say it's kind of weird because if Ariana's not talking to him, then why is she talking to him? But more importantly, why is she posting about it? Because so he- she could be doing the nice version with that, like say, give her the benefit of the doubt, which I know no one will. Um, why would she have to put it on Instagram? That immediately makes me suspicious. Here's what I was worried about. I was worried that Jeremy wanted an outlet for the world to know within the Vanderpump Rules umbrella that this had happened and like Sheena was willing to do it. Like, you know, what I, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? Like that he wanted this to like come out in the world and like. Like she- as a fuck you. Not as a fuck you, but like I think that he wanted some fanfare for this engagement and the <laughs> fact that Ariana isn't in his life. He like went to who he felt comfortable. This is like a this is kind of like a dark. <laughs> it's very I'm like being very psychological, which maybe I shouldn't be, but I just felt like I mean, there's something very weird about it. I, yeah, I feel like he like lost his sister right now at a pivotal time, and I don't know what he's doing to get her back because it seems like it's not working at all. And I don't know why Sheena would want to be the one that's kind of like usurping that role or even though you could say Sheena's doing something good for him but regardless of what it is like it seems bad to me and I don't want to spec like it's not I don't I don't like talking about this kind of stuff but it just seems so bad that like when him and Ariana's relationship was so bad that this moment happened in his life and I mean the fact the idea of him not um, you had, your wine? Oh, you can reach it. Okay. Sorry, we have wine. Amy and I have wine. I was worried that she couldn't reach it. <laughs> no, yeah. I just uh, don't want to have to take a certified too soon. Oh, of course. Um, <laughs> uh, the idea of him not ever seeing her on Broadway, like, because she only has four days left. Yeah. And if they haven't talked in months, I assume he didn't go. Yeah. Which seems like almost a deal breaker. Like, that is crazy. Like, yeah. remember... Um, Tom Girardi never saw Erica in Chicago. Why not? Um, well, he their relationship was like a sham or whatever, and he didn't want to go. But then wait, also, wait, Tom Girardi and <laughs> Erica's relationship was a sham. I, wait, what are you talking? They loved each other. Do okay. You, wait, you mean? Are, do you, wait, you mean that Erica what never loved? What husband Tom Gir- wouldn't go 
to his wife's Broadway debut. He was suffering at that time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he what has era, a private jet. What era was this? Was her Roxy Hart in? It was. It ended early because of COVID. So it was like 2020. I think he. I think he could have been. He uh, broke his ankle, fell out in the snow, rolled down a hill, or whatever. <laughs> He could have already been suffering whatever I think he's, he has now. On You're the only one left on that bandwagon. <laughs> I am? Did you watch Bet It All in Blonde, right? Yeah, I did. He, we never talked about that. Right, I know, I know, we never did. But no, I felt more validated in my opinion that he's been sort of... Even the car crash, when you just reminded me that he <laughs> rolled his car, that makes me think I'm worried about him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it so far-fetched that Tom Girardi actually has Alzheimer's, like he says? Yeah, no, I, I don't deny that he does. I think it's kind of a muddy line on, I think they're going to use it as much as they can for his defense, regardless of when it started or how it affected his choices. Like, I think it's kind of um, murky waters to start conflating, like, fraud and crime with dementia it's the perfect excuse yeah but (laughs) i mean i mean it's perfect in every way not for him it's horrible for him if because i think it's real but why not just backtrack a little bit oh sorry i'm not gonna keep saying what i'm saying i'm just saying i i know i'm alone. watch your dms (laughs) i'm alone on an island thinking that tom girardi has Alzheimer's or dementia. I don't know how yeah, to I mean, classify that. I'm sure some ain't right, but I think that they're also, they had issues anyway. That like, Ooh. remember back in the day when they had dinner and he was like, shut up, bitch. He, yeah, he did say shut up, bitch to her. He no, was he like, just, I'm speaking. Yeah, but that honestly, that had, no, this is not an excuse, but that had kind of grumpy old man <laughs> energy. Like, he, he was on camera. Well, okay, I'm not defending Tom Girardi. What the hell am I doing? I'm just saying that didn't, that that to me, I know that flare up was so bad. And that's always the clip they show of Tom when they say this guy sucks. Yeah. But I felt like he, in the moment, he got heated because he, he's, you know, you know when elderly, uh, elderly people. Grumpy old men. Grumpy old men, when they're trying to get their point across and they, and they feel like someone youthful, like, starts to speak for them or whatever. And they get indignant because they're like. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to Jeremy. Okay. The point is that both uh, two of the most recent Bravo stars, someone very close in their immediate family, didn't go. How do we know go. that Jeremy didn't see? We don't know. He he said they hadn't talked in months. She's mm-hmm. only been on Broadway a couple months, wow. and it's over this week. Okay. And she didn't say anything about his engagement. So unless he flew out like today. He should go. Uh, Jeremy, yeah. when you listen to this tomorrow, I'm telling you. Book a red eye Friday night. This is going to be Friday night when you listen to it. Jeremy, this is important. Friday night, <laughs> book a red eye. Is she? Is it on Saturday? Is it going to be on I Saturday? I think as of today, there's four days left. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday. Might be hard to get tickets for one of the final they shows. They do two shows on the weekend. So he has four chances this weekend. Four ch- okay. Book the red eye. Get to New York City. You'll get there at 5 a.m. Saturday morning. Either go through scalpers or talk to someone. Maybe talk this is when Brad. this is when Brad could come in handy. Brad, I know you listen you to Turtle Time. Brad got an Ariana's ear and was like, "I'm your brother now." And then Brad, Jeremy was like, "Sheena, I'm your brother now." You, wait, who said that to Sheena? <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy goes. Wait, so they're both doing brother, um, like they're both pretending that they're the brothers <laughs> of the other. So Jeremy went to Sheena. He goes, I'm your brother now. Yeah. And then Brad said to Ariana, I'm... you know what? We never, um, this is the main, this is a main feed episode. Normally we talk more shit on <laughs> Patreon, but I think, okay, here's how Brad, this is how Brad can actually pull a full blown solid. Brad, when you're listening to this, Jeremy, you contact Brad. Brad doesn't tell Ariana, even though this is kind of spoiling it when you listen to this. Brad goes, Ariana, I know your brother is a piece of shit, and I've been talking shit about him all my life, but actually he just got in touch with me. Or no, he doesn't say this to her. He just says, front row tickets reserved for Jeremy. And then when Ariana looks out on the stage, she sees her brother there, front row with roses in his hands, (laughs) clapping. And then when she goes, who the hell did this? Brad can be standing in the Phantom of the Opera seat. And And she looks up to him. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? And he a chandelier falls. What? A chandelier falls and there's a scream. 
<laughs> Is that what happens in Phantom of the Opera? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So then that, that, that takes care of two things. Brad gets to redeem himself in Ariana's eyes. If she was starting to think like starting to lose the Brad luster. And then Jeremy does this selfless thing where he's like, Ariana, no matter what, even though our relationship is pure shit, I came and I don't even care if yeah. you see me or you acknowledge me. Yeah. What I think happened with the, okay, we got to move on. We have a timer that we're looking at, but I think what happened with Ariana and Jeremy, if I'm predicting, is that when he uh, started to get Tom Sandoval back in his orbit, Ariana said, like we said on Patreon, E2, brother, even mm. you are doing this thing where you're middle grounding, like trying to mediate, yeah. trying to say it's nuance, both sides. My brother, mm -hmm. my brother, like yeah. your sister was cheated on yeah. in the house while 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 we were at our grandma's funeral together. My sister would never. I know. It's like like even if he even if he like texted Tom Sandoval and said, "I know we had a relationship and like I I've saw, I've seen you in so many different lights, but I cannot ever be a friend to you again." Yeah. Like no matter what. Like that makes more sense. I could imagine a world where Ariana even saw the the little glimmers of a burgeoning friendship mm -hmm. between Jeremy and this is all speculation. Jeremy and Tom. She's just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, <laughs> yeah. no, no one. I already have to deal with so many wishy washy friends. Yeah. Sheena, Lala, Schwartz. You know my cast. Everybody's yeah. like, you know, come on, please. Can you please just like, you know, forgive him for us? And the fact that like Jeremy would also be one of those people is probably too much. Yeah, and the fact that Jeremy doesn't feel so weird about it, like he's going to Jax's and like yeah. broing out with these guys. I'm like, he should feel so uncomfortable, especially yeah. knowing that it will be seen by the public. It's alluring though. Those boys. <laughs> I've seen him at Jax's Studio City. It's like, you, you know, it's like. You see him and, and you're like, whoa, nothing's wrong over here. And they're like, come in, Jeremy, the water's fine at yeah. Jax's Studio City. I'll get you a free shot and look at all these people that like love us. And it's like if Ariana was maybe too distant for him at a pivotal, like at a time yeah. that he needed her, what, because she was so busy and he, and Jax and Tom were like, yeah, come over to Jax. A tom sandoval said on the extended episode uh ariana was busy uh getting sent to the moon and meeting the pope which i thought was a pretty funny uh satire of her busy schedule it yeah it was you got to give him a little bit of credit <laughs> that it was kind of silly he was so um and yeah we, we need to talk about i mean it'll just be baked into our general coverage but the extended and uncensored episode this week which to my knowledge i usually watch it live um but I don't think they've been doing those so far, but no. this week was the first time I've seen it, and the episode was so much better. I completely agree. I did not like the broadcast cut. I said, I declared it bad episode. Mm -hmm. I was like, this this didn't hit. Like, I, I didn't yeah. like this episode. I watched the extended with you, and I watched it again today. It's such a better episode because what the editors thought was on the cutting room floor is actually more interesting yeah, than all of the scenes. Yeah, they should have swapped it. Yeah. It should have been like, it, it, it's way more nuanced. It's way more fun. They let the scenes breathe. There was so much shit that I cared about. Like Tom Sandoval immediately hired a new assistant, which I didn't see yeah. that last night with Chad. you. Chad. Like Craig, I think. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's okay. No, no. And it, it's like, it was just, it was way better. And like the the cat litter stuff was more nuanced oh, than you actually saw. we're going to have a kitty litter minute. I have thoughts. Yeah, yeah let's go. So okay. I, I, it. It bumped up for me, and yeah. that's never happened before where I'm like. Yeah. I mean, I guess they haven't been doing they haven't been calling them extended, but there have been a few episodes this year that have been an hour 15 on broadcast. Yeah. So I guess, I don't know why they just didn't make this one extra long. Yeah. But I, I don't know either, but if you were like down on the episode and you haven't watched on Peacock, watch on Peacock. It's yeah. it's so much better. There's so much fun stuff in there. There's there's new scenes. You get to see Jacqueline again, James' oh, mom. Yeah. Um, but with our last, the news minute, with our last three minutes, I just wanted to ask you because I haven't we haven't talked about this. But on Vanderpump Rules night, uh, Jax on Twitter, I follow him on Twitter, oh, yeah. and he was ranting about Vanderpump Rules. He said, he said, um, you know Vanderpump Rules is at a goddamn dead end when they're doing water tasting. This is some <laughs> of the most boring shit I've ever seen in my life. And then he credited Lala with saying a funny line. And he goes, 
God damn, I'm sorry. I'm just so bored with Vanderpump Rules. So glad the valley is back in our lives and things are back to being real. I was like, yeah, he said everything after, what do you say, season, did you say four or was it six? Six. But then, then also in addition to that rant on Twitter, also there's footage that okay. uh, someone uh, named Kate Riccio filmed him having a live roast with a microphone <laughs> at Jack Studio City, just roasting Vanderpump Rules, saying this shit is scripted. That's scripted. They don't hang out with each other. Like, I, meaning, yeah, he's like, like, take it from me. I was on the show forever. It's scripted. He goes, my scene. I know I was on it. That was scripted. Yeah, he's like, everything after season six is a wash, a wash. He goes, and I loved this show. It used to be so organic. Back when it was my show, he didn't say this, yeah. but it was like, back when it, my era, it was so real. This is all shit. And then he was like, okay, now we can watch the valley where the good shit is. Yeah, he's so, like, now we can get real again. So. Um, I, well, okay. So I have, I have the, my main question. My main question is, for just from your perspective, why does Jax feel now is the right time to <laughs> criticize Vanderpump Rules? <laughs> because as we predicted, he's back in the seat of power, and he has no choice but to bite the hand that feeds him <laughs> and to say outrageous shit and piss everyone off. He- this is why we wanted him back. He, I, yes, I know. I'm. I. I fully say, I love what he's doing. <laughs> this is. This is amazing. What he's yeah. doing. This is exactly what I would want from Jax. But I can't believe it. Like, how can Jax continue to shock me? The Valley and Vanderpump Rules have the same executive producers. <laughs> They're on the same network. Yeah. The Valley is spawned from Vanderpump Rules, and the only reason the Valley existed, exists is because Scandaval was so powerful that it brought that show into yeah. the universe. Yeah, and so, it did have a, you know, obviously they always phrase the the ratings in a way, but they said it's like the biggest premiere in Bravo uh, 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 history or something what? like that. You know what? Turtle Time actually just had <laughs> the first one-day best premiere rates of all time. It's like you can – Bravo and Peacock can fabricate those numbers. Yeah. Like, no offense. I'm sorry. I mean, I know we yeah. want to be but their I good mean, graces. But, I mean, it does make sense if Vanderpump is their highest-rated show and that was the lead-in yes. and it's connected. I, it would make sense that it did well. I, yeah, totally. But I'm just saying uh, this is just for all future, like – uh, any of those metrics you see, they said Roadhouse on Amazon was watched for over a hundred million minutes or whatever. That it's was like, like the worst movie I've ever seen. It's horrible. And people did the math and it's like, okay, so a, like, no, sorry. It was like, I don't know what it was, but it was like, okay, a million people watched it for one minute. It's like they can use now new metrics to justify anything. So it's like on Netflix. If like you hover over a thumbnail, it probably counts as a view. Totally. But why would Jax, who has seen the call sheet on the Valley and knows that Alex Baskin is the same executive producer on both. And that if he's criticizing another show and calling it pure shit, that the network and the other people on his show might not like it. Yeah. Do you think they actually get offended or do you think they're like, he's at it again? Like, he can't be changed. This is the same behavior that got him now, I believe, fired from Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. When he started to push back against Lisa, when he probably pushed back against Alex Baskin, he's immediately regressing to the behavior of a hothead egomaniac that got him fired originally. Yeah. And it's the minute that, first of all, Vanderpump Rules season 10 just ignited Vanderpump Rules to an up a new echelon that it had never been at before without him. Yeah. And that's the full reason for his new life. He was, we've said this before, he him and Brittany were about one month away from packing their bags to Kentucky and we would have never heard from them again. No yeah. offense. Bef- right before Scandaval erupted. And then there was the Jackson Brittany watch Vanderpump Rules show. Yeah. That was a test to get the valley going. Yeah. So I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, Biting the hand that feeds you is exactly what to call it. But I just, I, I can't imagine a world where he doesn't understand why that would be the wrong decision to make. He can't be tamed, and that's the best part. And I will say that um, that new guy, Jesse, who's like the realtor on the Valley, is maybe the first person that I think might be scarier than Jax. Oh, I, I, I fully agree. Like, I think he's like a killer. Yeah, I was, yeah, like you if you saw a TMZ article and it said Jesse, whatever his last name is, and like the the photo had him covered in blood. Yeah. You'd be like, oh. It's like American psycho vibes. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's a completely different energy than Jax. We always say Jax has, well, I, I've said like he has sort of Bugs Bunny, ain't I a little stinker energy where he can do the worst things you've ever heard, like seen or heard, but then immediately for some reason his charisma gets you back on his side because it's just like he's horrible, but he knows he's horrible. Yeah. And like you kind of just like give him the benefit of the doubt. Jesse has none of that. He's no. comfortable being an asshole and a horrible person, and he's very comfortable with it yeah he's like mean to his wife and fully um admits and owns up to being i think a self-described bad father (laughs) yeah i mean he doesn't he doesn't mind coming off as a very bad father yeah it's kind of wild and honestly um he's kind of keeping me interested because i'm like what the hell is he gonna do yeah i mean i'll give him credit he he's writing the line of like he is still engaging yeah. while being... And knowing that they're separated by the end of the season is yeah. interesting. Yeah, and their, um, their uh, whatever, therapy session or life coach <laughs> ses- session was one of the best scenes of, yeah. of, of in that episode. Totally. I loved that. Um, okay, was that it on the news front? Yeah. So so your final di- or, or thoughts on that, Jackson, is just that, like... No matter what, he can't be tamed. <laughs> yeah. And then like, but Brittany also, I mean, in a different way, is being so open about their separation to a degree I don't think I've ever seen. Um, she's on every red carpet in every interview on Watch What Happens Live. She's like spilling about the state of their relationship. He obviously doesn't want to talk about it. I don't know if it's because he thinks he'll come off poorly or mm-hmm. what. Um, but she kind of implied on Watch What Happens that... Um, Because he says, what was the final straw? What was the catalyst for you to actually move out or whatever? And she acts really uncomfortable and was like, oh, I don't know if I want to say. And um, she kind of, in my opinion, implied. She said that she went out with Kristen, like they had a night on the town or something like that. And that Jax accused them of something that didn't happen and that he didn't believe her. And they got in a huge fight about it. Again. And we know that in whatever season that was, that... Kristen ate her Kentucky muffin and he told everyone and he was like mad about it, but not too mad. Or at least he got back at her by telling everyone in the, that sir. He was, yeah, he said he, he was shocked by it. Yeah. And, um, no, I mean not too mad, but he, he, he started to get more and more frustrated that they wouldn't admit it. And he was like telling, like he knew he was telling the truth. So he was getting really, really pissed off that they wouldn't even, you know, say that it actually happened but you're saying in now in the contemporary era after they got done filming the valley yeah that he accused them again of having a. she didn't say explicitly that he accused them of something sexual but it was something about something that happened that they did together Brittany and Kristen that he was mad about and obviously my mind went immediately to that because that's what it sounded like and then one of our friends texted us the exact same thing. And I was like, that's how I read it too. So, and then Brittany. If Andy was quick enough, he could have been like, Kentucky Muffin? Yeah, he might not have <laughs> even even remembered that. So, so then when Brittany, like, when Brittany found out that Jack still harbors those suspicions that she would make love <laughs> to Kristen again, like, she was so uh, disturbed by that that, like, he could... <laughs> It sounded like that. they just got in a huge blowout starting with that. Like, he didn't believe her. She was like, you're full of shit. Like, I think they've just been fighting, and that was a huge fight. And she was like, she said that she got a moment of clarity, realizing everything she's put up with this whole time, and realized and was very easily able to walk away and was like, I'm done. Which, I'm proud of her for that. Me too. It, this is so monkey's paw. <laughs> like, Jax, like, went in a closet and found or went to a st- antique store and found a monkey's paw Jordan Peele's production company yeah <laughs> and he goes my wish is to get all of my fame back in my own show that i get to star in and have all of the popularity and have a bar just like my friends tom sandoval who i'm so jealous of yeah and the monkey's paw as they do <laughs> went <laughs> and they go and i don't know how it communicates to you that you got your wish you get your wish, yeah. but it destroys your fucking life. Yeah. Because yeah. Brittany immediately is like, 
I just saw the full clarity of Jax. I never want to see him again in my life. I'm moving out. Yeah. Now he's alone in his house. He's obviously Brittany's probably hanging out with Cruz, you yeah. know, at her place. I, I don't Airbnb. know. And then, and then he's got this bar where he's sort of like in a glass house <laughs> where he's just looked at like a, um, you know, like a like. Yeah. He's like the main source of entertainment. Disney brunch. Disney brunch vibes. <laughs> so he what got have, what he wanted. And what's going to happen with? We need the dominoes to fall to see how each couple handles the sale of their house post breakup. Like, will they rent it? Will they sell it and split it? Did they? Um, Which couples, Jesse and? Well, I guess yeah. Who's even left? But I just mean Ariana and Tom were yeah. one that we saw how it shook out, which was maybe worst case scenario. It took a year and it's not done yet. Right. Um, I'm just curious, like. Because I think we heard that Jackson and Brittany took out, they refinanced, so yeah. like their mortgage rate sucks, so they're probably not even going to profit. So it's like, what's the best thing to do? Um, it's funny how these days that now that they're all in their 40s, it quickly turns into just like real estate talk. Like, I'm like yeah. no. who's making what? Who bought what? Like, whatever. Yeah. Um, also, on that quick conversation, I just want to quickly remind us all that... Um, Lala ate Ariana's Kentucky muffin. Do you remember that? Wait, yeah. You said, La yeah, Lala ate Ariana's Kentucky muffin in the backseat of a car while Tom Sandoval was driving them around. Yeah, I just um, wanted to remember that really Of course, quick. me me too. Uh, well, I had, <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking a couple of things while you were talking. Well, first, well, I, I did want to scrutinize what Jax was saying, you know, but I think we do have to move on. But I just want to say it's so ridiculous for him to say the value is so much better when they like have the exact same production value in every way. And it's very debatable that Vanderpump <laughs> Rules, it, I, I'd say Vanderpump Rules is still better at this point than the Valley. Yeah. So I think that's ridiculous. Also, he was on two seasons past the golden era that he <laughs> thinks. And they, they were yeah. great, you know, for the most part. But anyway, um, yeah, I guess we should move on to talking about Vanderpump Rules this week, Line in the Sand. Yeah. Bigger, bolder, and uncut. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Do you um, feel ready to move straight forward? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool. All right. Um, Yeah, I I don't know if... uh, I didn't notice this the first time until I watched the uncut version, so I don't know if it... Uh, I assume it was in the regular version, but it opens... One of the opening scenes is Schwartz and Joe making juice, and they show that he has turtle i think they're salt and pepper shakers but it's one turtle humping another turtle yeah and i was like i don't know how i feel about that do you think that was just like an easter egg for us i think i think so yeah i thought that was interesting too i we also learned that they don't have play-doh in new zealand you saw that part oh yeah and brock uh, brock says no we don't have play-doh we just have mud <laughs> do you think that's kind of sad that um <laughs> new zealanders don't get to experience play-doh yeah, I feel bad. His childhood. I forgot until the after show again uh, that he's missing two fingers. I, re I always remember that. I like. I was like, I forgot. What he did got he caught say? in like a fence. No. It was another like farm, like a Viva Dresher type thing. I never look at his fingers, even <laughs> though I know that. I never look at his fingers. Yeah, I, I, just... I only notice on the after show. It's like, yeah, he only has three fingers on one hand. Three? I thought it was only one that was well, missing. One and a half, I think. Oh, okay. Man, I feel so bad that he got it's caught crazy. in the... Kids was... can't be running around a, a barn, I guess. Remember when he also told us told us when he was drunk that he used to, like, he used to love the milkmaid that was across the, the, <laughs> yeah. the fence? The pig farmer's daughter or whatever. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, I also liked uh, Schwartz and Joe are making juice, and she says that the pineapple rinds look like butter's poop, and then they show butters and he looks at them like fuck you guys and then he goes under the bed yeah they um <laughs> those dogs go under the bed a lot yeah because i remember when katie came over one time he was like sorry butters and gordo well, are hiding hates when he makes juice oh that's happened that... more than once oh they get scared he needs to stop making juice over there um also okay so there's the girls working out it's kind of nothing happens it's not a big deal yeah um katie hates working out that's the main takeaway. They're setting up that they're going to do something else. Um, then Ariana and Anne get together for her little job interview. She's wearing like a suit. Yes. Trying to be professional. Um, and this feels very much like a plot to me. Yeah. It, well, it, yeah, it only seemed, well, 
yeah, it definitely has a, like a sitcom premise. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I'm working for one of the, you know, split partners in this house and I want to work for the other one, even though I know why and wants to work for Ariana. Like she loves Ariana much more. She doesn't want to work for a cheater that makes him her pick up his underwear. <laughs> but ultimately, when Ariana says we're not going to do this now, I'm like, OK, then what was the point of this? You right. must have known that you were going to make this decision. So you just wanted this yeah. moment on camera. Yeah. And said that she would love to work for an amazing girl boss. Yeah. What'd you think about that? I didn't think we were still saying girl boss in 2024. She might have been, because this is uh, June of last <laughs> year. I think maybe she was the last person. Okay. Did, did we stop saying that? Yeah. Um, it kind of like, because um, I think wasn't the that woman who started that website, Nasty Gal, her book was called Girl Boss. I think she coined it. Um, and that brand went down in flames. Because she was like, kind it, of a tyrant? Yeah. And it turned out like working there was terrible. Okay. Um, and then it was like the same with the Cheryl, uh, what's her name from Facebook? Like she was the one that said lean in. Um, it was kind of the same thing. Like she was a girl boss. And it's like, we're all just talking about capitalism here. Like it's not like cool just because you're a chick. So they kind of sullied the girl boss <laughs> vibes. Yeah. Damn. Like... That's- we we don't stand a girl boss. We don't. I don't. Well, you mean like hashtag girl boss? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I I didn't. I um. You know. I don't know. This is a complicated matter to talk about. <laughs> I understand why. No, no, no. Not the girl boss part. <laughs> like I. Like I don't know. I I like. I guess Tom Sandoval like, overhearing. This, I was mm-hmm. like, did that really happen? Like, he mm-hmm. walked out of the gym and he listened to them. Right. And they, then they don't show the scene where he apparently made her cry. Right. So I was like, that would have been an amazing scene. That happened right after. Did Tom right. Sandoval wait for for the cameras to leave to then, like, you know, deride Anne for mm-hmm. betraying him or whatever? Right. I just, there was so much missing. Yeah. And, and uh, ultimately, they're leaving Anne as, like, sort of this, like, lingering thing but there I, I don't know it just like it didn't i i can't tell where the reality is in the situation right. is my problem yeah they gave her a confessional on the extended cut yeah she has multiple um, so that was interesting yeah um uh, and then and then at some point in the extended which i'm sorry to only talk about the extended this is gonna be <laughs> shocking to people who just watched it but like katie's like i want to get Anne for something about her oh yeah so there's She's like, like, she needs a job and uh, we need to hire people. Yeah, and Tom Sandoval's like, oh, I didn't officially, you know, fire her or whatever. So please let me do what I will with Anne. It's like, <laughs> I don't know, either either include Anne fully in the edit of what the hell is going on to, so we understand or or cut it all together. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I just don't really know what to do there. And it sounds like I don't think Anne is going to end up working anywhere. <laughs> right. Well, she has a podcast now. Yeah, right. Uh, which on the after show, Tom was like, she'll be hearing from my lawyers about that, which I was like, yikes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it makes sense why Anne wants to switch teams or whatever. And you, uh, I don't really understand. Like, Ariana is just is just for the... Because she doesn't want to be petty towards Tom Sandoval. She doesn't want to take his assistant, even though, like, that right. would be reasonable for her to do that. I guess. I just don't really care. It's Me kind either, of like fake. I guess. Um, yeah, and then she uses that opportunity um, to say that Sandoval never changes his underwear and that she would wear he would wear uh, his underwear for, for days, and she wonder he wonders why she didn't want to fuck him. And I'm like, I think there's probably more at play for why you didn't want to fuck him, but also... As we move down the line, I'm going to start questioning how often Ariana changed her underwear. <laughs> you, you are going to? We The saga continues on her dirty ass room, and I'm going to say it. Okay, yeah, let's, when, we, when we get to it, I'm ready for you to have that moment. Um, I think it, I, I, I defended her early in the season. I was like, <laughs> you know, she's busy as hell, and she didn't maybe know that the first day of filming would be caught on camera. Mm-hmm. But you're right, as we move forward in the timeline, she does know that cameras are in her room. But I don't know why, every time I get a little glimpse of her room, I don't look at all of the stuff in it. Is it pretty bad still? They showed it again. Um, it was sloppy, but... I'm more concerned about the rotting chicken satay skewers right. that um, she leaves behind, which I'll give her the benefit of the doubt in the sense that she d- probably doesn't want to venture to the kitchen too often because she doesn't r- want to run into Tom. Um, but uh, I just can't imagine leaving Thai food 
on my bedside. Yeah, I mean, we don't know many how, hours. Right. How how many hours would you give her to have chicken saute and leave it in the room? I assume it was from the night before, at least. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I, you know, uh, the only re- the only reason I give her the benefit of the doubt is because she closed her room, and she yeah, so wanted. Yeah. Imagine how it stank in there. I know. You know, she might be have smell blindness. I can't even watch TV with the when I finish eating takeout. I have to clear the table before I can continue watching what I'm watching because I don't want to smell the food I just ate do you have in good, the room with me. Do you have a good nose? I think so. I don't do it because of that reason, but I just can't stand dirty dishes it's in front gross. of me while I watch. Yeah. But it's not the smell. It's both for me. I like, yeah, I would never, I don't want to just have sloppy dishes in front of me while I'm Because finishing then you can't watches. relax because it's wow. like, well, I have to do that still. Wow, that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> But I, I didn't know you were like that. We've never eaten food and watched a movie together, but I am I am so that way. No, I need to clear the table real quick and then resume. I think, okay, okay. I agree fully. Ariana, I think, you know, it was time to clean your room. <laughs> but I do think there is a little bit of what you said, which is like, I don't want to throw away the chicken saute. Yeah. Tom Sandoval is doing that. Uh, breathing exercise down in the living room right now with <laughs> so, going, like with a song blasting and he's going ah, 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 and she's going I am not throwing out the chicken saute you know what I mean right so, well I say then if you are going to live in the same house for a year then you're going to need to put in a bachelor's suite a little kitchenette something in your yeah. room have a simple human trash can in your bedroom then yeah and I mean, we'll get to it, but I thought Lala's zinger was pretty funny. I know that Lala's annoying and she's being too much and like being too hard on her in general, but that was a funny connection, I yeah. think. Yeah, okay. Uh, y- y- me too. I'm fine. I mean, you know, we have to talk about the nuance of it. I'm fine getting, <laughs> even when we said Tom Sandoval saying she's got a job on the moon is like kind of funny, despite <laughs> who's saying it. You got to just admit it. Yeah. And I thought there was merit to Lala saying that too. But yeah. to me... We'll get to it. But to me, the fact that Lala is so outspoken against Ariana and wants to do those digs, to me, I, I'm fine with the digs, but mm-hmm. I don't know why she's doing it. Right. I don't understand right. how she got there. Right. Like that, but we'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, do we have to talk about <laughs> Tom Schwartz going over to Sheena and Brock's house? No, I just, I don't know why he brings a plant everywhere he goes. It's kind of getting old at this point. It is getting old to me, and the only way I'm justifying it to myself is that he thinks he is bringing back, or or, sorry, he is still in the doghouse culturally with his friend group, so he's always giving a gift, and he's in his plant era, so he constantly feels like he has to make these people like him, and that's why he's doing it, but he's overdoing it. He's done it, like this is his hundredth plant that he's given, but I think it's just he feels uncomfortable still going to his friend's houses and he's constantly trying to make amends for his behavior. That's how I read it. Yeah. And then there was that one comment he made about, he's like, wow, the West side is such a breath of fresh air. It feels like um, me and Katie, whenever we would have sex during our marriage, which wasn't a lot, but I would be like, why don't we do this more often? Implying like, why don't I go to the West side more often? Which I thought was interesting in the context of the conversations that he has throughout the rest of this episode where They do have like almost like I know it's more on his end, like a flirtation where he's like, come on, like you still love me. Like we can joke around. And when she gives him an inch, when they interact with like a little spark like they do at that water event, it's so fun to watch because for so long now we've just watched her hate his guts, which isn't particularly fun to watch. And I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. And like he treat her like shit for many years and their marriage was trash and like whatever. But whenever they can be playful, I'm like, I see that there was something worth fighting for. Yeah. They were in their Jesse and Michelle era for like six years. (laughs) Yeah. So we just saw them bickering and hating each other. But yeah, I saw a little bit of the spark too when she was like, when she, when Katie was like, um, you know, we can't, which I'm spoiling it, but it doesn't matter because it's a point. But um, she was like, uh, we'll, we'll talk. You need to make better decisions like your clothes. Yeah. And he was like, come on, it's a fun outfit. And she was like, I don't know. And it's like, you could tell that that Katie energy was still playful, even though she was like nagging him a little yeah. bit. Like that was a little peek into their dynamic that was kind of sweet, I right. thought. And I liked like, that's why I enjoyed what happened with the Max thing because not that I think she should feel bad because 
she can do whatever she wants. Like, yeah, that's fine. But it set the dynamic off kilter because normally yes she's always on the moral high ground yes and for once it got shifted where she could maybe have to feel bad or like be like oh like i don't know if that was the best thing to do not be apologetic but to be like he was in the power seat for a minute but he didn't really give her shit for it he was like i'm not mad by the way like it almost sounded like he had cuck energy and kind of like wanted to hear more yeah he was licking his lips and he even (laughs) later makes a joke where he was like where he says he says um this oyster is so big in my mouth it can barely fit and he goes that's what katie said about his friend's penis (laughs) and lisa on her deleted scene says that she's heard max boyens has a lot to offer lisa even lisa has heard the gotten wind yeah of max boyens's uh, penis size. So he has had sex with Kristen, Sheena, Katie, and Dana. Yes. Which I forgot about the Dana thing, uh, which, because I kind of delete that season from my mind. Right. But they have a podcast together and they talked about it. I watched a clip today where she essentially apologizes. She did to Dana? Not, I don't think she literally says, I'm sorry, but she says, I was very drunk and my first thought in the morning was that i would have to call you Whoa. like she didn't say that she felt bad about schwartz she was like oh shit like that like girl code wise was what was her bigger concern and i was like i didn't even think about that yeah well i remember that that's all i know about max because right. i remember season eight um did katie did, was dana just finding out for the first time do you know like when she watched yeah. it uh i don't know if she's i assume she told her okay. um earlier yeah right but i only watched a clip but apparently if you actually listen to it, Dana like goes in about Max. Like I don't think she likes him. Okay. Oh yeah, I don't think so either. Did we also reveal that uh this was we haven't recorded since we went to Schwartz and Sandy's, did we? I didn't go. Oh yeah, I was there. Yeah, t- talk about it. <laughs> talk about it. For a I second. went to Schwartz and Sandy's last Friday night and Schwartz was there. He gave me his hat because mine was charred. So you you told him? Yes. Well, actually, our friend told him, and then he came over and he gave me his hat. He gave you the hat off his head? It's true. That is so sweet. Yeah. I will cherish it. Um, He was nice as always. Uh, Then later in the later hours, also, I think Greg was there, and then Sandoval showed up later with Kyle Chan and Max Boyens. So those people are just always there. Yeah. And I have to say, Sandoval, uh, it really is like a yin yang like schwartz whether or not you think he's a criminal or whatever you want to call him right he has like the sweet white light energy and sandoval has like dark freak yeah. energy like he showed up much later in the night yeah. like he comes like at midnight and he was doing all of his little bartending tricks like doing the yeah. worm and like shaking the thing like so performatively and i was like I can't believe that he just really acts like this all the time. Yeah. It's insane. He's got, yeah, if you go there, he's got basically like flies uh, swarming around him. (laughs) Right? Like, I was just like, there there is something sinister. It's like his fashion, his vibe, the way he wants to be seen, his like... Is it like the crow? It kind of. I don't even know anything about the crow. Yeah, well, that's a cursed right production. I, right. Oh, sorry, I don't even want to bring that up. But it's like it's kind of like I also get the sense, but I can't. I don't know if it's my perception of him now and seeing him right. in new light, or and how the world sees him, or if actually if I would have seen him at any moment in time. Right. But I've seen him before, and right. he never had that. I mean, in the light of like back in the day, like five years ago, when you go to like Pride or something like that. Everyone was having fun. Yeah. Like he would be standing on the bar and like pouring shots in people's mouth. And like that was the vibe. Like you were like, this is fun. Yeah. Um, But when you see him at like Schwartz and Sandy's, like after hours, there's not that many people there. He's like, you know, wearing like a baseball cap, like low because he's kind of like a wanted man. Like he's like, I don't know, like a sinister, like outlaw kind of energy. Yeah. So it just feels like, you know, you're like, do you take a picture with him? That's like problematic. Like I've never taken a photo with him uh, ever, but certainly not post Scandoval, even though I have like uh, two or three photos of shorts. Um, but 
yeah, just like seeing that he's always with Kyle Chan and then Max. Like, I was just like, these guys just have to come to this place night after night and just hang out and just wait for people to ask for their photo. And like, it's just very weird. Did it make you sad? Kind of. I, well, that's what I was saying about Jax. You know, like you wanted this and then now you just have to be at your bar to yeah. sustain it. Like, yeah. Like, so, yeah. I don't know. I mean, they they they, they must like it. Like, right. They must have known. There's, that- yeah. There's also something about uh, Sandoval's fashions that I was thinking about during this week's episode where, you know, he dresses like Harry Styles. Like, he wants to be like Harry Styles, Timmy Chalamet, like Jen Z. Like, he wears flared big pants with those platform converse and like this week he in the uh, the extra yeah. clip he was wearing like a crocheted sweater vest with nothing underneath yeah. just like bare arms and with like, like candy. pearl necklace yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. and i'm like i mean in a world where we like tom sandoval i would say he almost pulls it off because he's fit he looks pretty good like he has a certain style. He He's not pulling off those women's blazers from Zara that are way too tight on his biceps, but that's another story. Um, but there's something, like, sad about it, not just because of his age, but because he's in such a dark time mm-hmm. that I'm like, why are you wearing, like, a Coachella raver outfit when you are coming in with, like, your head down low and, like, a to quote Brock, tail between your legs. Like, I'm like, read the room, kind of. Like, just like, this isn't like your time to shine. So your, his fashion (laughs) should be, peacocking. Should be dictated by your, your standing in the world. Yeah. Well, like, or, or, or how people are perceiving you (laughs) at that time. And you, you're, you're dressing like a fun celebrity, (laughs) right? Yeah, I guess it's just like, It's always, as you know, he's the most extra, so he's always going to do that. But it's just like, yeah, like he just really wants to be seen. I think, well, well, my only counter to that is that I think we would absolutely love it if this, if Scandival had not happened and you and I were in this exact same place and we were like, I saw Tom Sandoval. He looked awesome. That was, I'm sorry to say, like I was talking that way at the early stages of season 10. Like I was like, he like has like turned the dial up like he's just like going for it yeah so i think he can't let his fashion love like i actually i'll be honest i think (laughs) i think his suits and his confessionals look cool i'm not a style guy i think he needs to he can wear those but he needs to size up and get them tailored they are ill-fitting you think so yes i think they well i'm not a style guy (laughs) i i think i can say i think i can say with my full candor and not be reviled that I think Tom Sandoval dresses well mm-hmm. in, in this season and when I've seen him. Yeah. And I, I, and But I get exactly what you're saying where I don't know if now Tom Sandoval has this awful evil aura because of how we know he feels about himself and how we feel or if he always has had that aura. Right. But I, I really feel like if we were not post-Scandoval, he, we, the flies that I see circling around him would be butterflies. And you and I would be going... <laughs> Just like how we, when we watched Tom Sandoval the most extras before and mm-hmm. post, we were like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. We <laughs> love it. We gave him the benefit of the doubt. It was like a kid playing, you know, having fun. And we were like, oh, you do you, Tom. And then after we were like, this is dark. This is evil. <laughs> this sucks. He's weird. And it's like, it's just all perception. Yeah. And I feel like he hasn't changed. No. He always had this cheater, liar vibe. He always knew what he was doing in the background. Yeah. But outwardly. He was ready to be received with love, and we loved when he was when he was loving it. And then yeah. when now in this hat down, cowering era, when he's dressed flamboyantly, we're like, "Oh, there's something wrong going on here with you." <laughs> yeah. This this is anyway. That's yeah, that's no, totally. my thought. I think it's perception. Yeah. Um. I'm sure we're gonna get roasted for what? Uh, because we said for one second that his <laughs> outfits were cool. Yeah. We, he's no, we, at least I, giving serving something different. I, I, why would, I don't, who, why would somebody be mad at us for saying that his clothes, he <laughs> He's dresses. He's a killer. He looks like shit. <laughs> <gasps> oh, 
Okay. All right. All right. I'll take if I'll take it. I'll take the brunt of that. If I said he <laughs> he has good style and that's horrible, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the world. Okay. Let's skip. We you know let's skip a little bit. Let we let's go to the water sommelier. Yeah. Scene. Let's do, go. Do you care? Okay. I I thought James's reaction to the sommelier was really weird. I've never seen James be like starstruck by this guy. Do, do you? He's like peeking out the window. And he's going. Oh, yeah. This guy I've seen on the news is yeah. here. He he was like his name's Martin. He definitely just meant TikTok, right? He meant TikTok. He said on the <laughs> news. Because I've seen him there. Yeah. And, and he was like kind of like stunned because Lala used their home yeah. to host her, her water event. Yeah. James was complaining that he had to spend $150 on pizza because he was forced to host her event, um, which I'm like, you didn't have to pay out of pocket. No, she should have reimbursed you for also, those pizza. It was Pizza Hut and Pepsi. And they didn't blur those brands, but they did blur the box, but not the part that said Pizza Hut. So I was, my theory is that like they had some sort of special cheese, like <laughs> now with, uh-huh. you know, uh, I don't know, what's a cheese brand? <laughs> Kraft. <laughs> Pizza <laughs> now with Kraft cheese, and they couldn't get that brand, but okay. they were able to show. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there was some like yeah. combo uh, brand there that that's why. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Martin is there, and I don't know why Lala is Lala's home. Just it's not you can't have a good water tasting party at her home because she's Cause living it's in like an apartment. Upstairs and like so it's better for like production to have this. Yeah, uh, I thought Martin. No offense, and I know you know he might watch this, but like I felt like like. This was kind of a flop zone, uh, even even water tasting wise. Right. I'm not like down on it for like its entertainment value. Right. But I thought he was kind of like, <laughs> like he didn't know a lot of the facts, like about that oldest water. Yeah. Like he was like, I don't know how many are in the country or whatever. Like he didn't, he's kind of just like, yeah. I think. Who do, else do you think has hired him? Like maybe like a corporate event yeah. or something like that? I mean, I'm sure it's just like kind of like fun like how does he make money i mean i guess if you're on tiktok you make money but yeah he's kind of like you know like probably like salt bay you remember that guy right he he would come to your steak and he he'd put a little like flick of salt on your meat or whatever (laughs) and you just hire him for like a thousand bucks right (laughs) uh but yeah so everybody came to this Yeah, yeah i mean it's a water event Yep. And Lala, I, I felt kind of like it was kind of silly. Lala was trying to justify this event because she knows obviously it's going to be like looked down upon or whatever. She was like, she just kept having to say like, water is so good. Yeah, like, she's like, I'm five years sober, so water is my thing. It's like, I love water and like water is so like good to me. And if a place doesn't have water, like I absolutely hate it. It's like, okay, yeah, I don't think you had to justify it that much. You're yeah. just having a water tasting. Did you like that one water that he said was so old that it could be dinosaur piss? Yeah, he kind of got them started on the wrong foot though. Because they were all like, are we about to drink dinosaur piss? And then Lala was like, this one tastes like cum. He said that. Well, yeah, he was like, it smells like, it tastes like beep. And she was like, I'll say it. She's Yeah, and she said, "You did you say cum loud? <laughs> I said he, it. This is why he he was going, and then he goes. This is why I'm saying the water, Martin. I, I wasn't loving this presentation. He was like, "Now I'm Harry Potter of water. Watch me turn <laughs> water into milk." And then he shook the shit out of it, and it didn't look like milk it's at just all. Like carbonation or like it, bubbles. It looked like it didn't even look like it didn't even look close to milk. And no one, and then also because their energy was so, like Lala should have done better in the moment to be hype it up because everyone was so also skeptical of this stupid event that their energy was like very low and Katie was like, this sucks. Yeah. So it was like, it was lame and it didn't have to be that lame. He he kind of was playing to an audience that like wasn't vibing with him. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he said it tasted like, um, come, (laughs) he did the Harry Potter (laughs) trick. Um, I, I wanted to ask you something. I wanted to ask you something. Um, do you think, like, if, um, you know, like, the Fremen on Dune? Yeah. Like, if they would have seen this event, oh like, God. do you think that they would have, like, freaked out? They would have cried and then been like, no, no, can't use my tears. <laughs> and then he'd be like, Fremen water. <laughs> That's bottled. Yeah. I just, like, I was just thinking, like, could you imagine, like, they... Th- find water to be so sacred and then they found this guy that <laughs> yeah, has like he's like this is worm piss right they would be... 
<laughs> anyway, he. I just thought I felt his kind of awkward energy, and they weren't helping. Everything kind of sucked. And then he was like, this is thousand-year-old water. And he goes, there's only one of these bottles in the world or something. And then he just started spilling it. Like, yeah. he, he poured it, and it spilled. And then Lala tried to, like, engage with him. And she goes, how many of these did you say? And he goes, I don't know. He goes, I, I just no know idea. there's one in the United States. And it's like, there's one in the United States, and it just got... <laughs> partly spilled on Jane Kennedy's floor, you know, ground yeah. outside by his pool. Very dumb. Yeah. Um, and it ends pretty quickly. And then uh, the boys are like hanging out in the basketball court area. Brock asks Tom about that girl T. He was like, we're just hanging out. We're just chilling. Apparently Ariana like, you know, was talking shit about me to her, whatever. Um, and then uh, so they're talking about like dating. I think. I don't think it's at this point, but at one point they're talking about doing, um, they're going to go to like a dating event or something. Sexy Saturday singles. Yeah. But Brock is real um, producer brain in yeah. the scene. He goes, so Tom, while well, he's like playing basketball, he's like, he's like, so, uh, okay, well, if you're not going to talk about tea, like, who else are you dating? Like, he's just trying to get Tom Sandoval to talk about like yeah. what people would want to know at this Brock point. Brock is like, if no one else will save this show, I fucking will. Yeah, he's will. really trying. Um, and then they, the pizza comes and did you notice Tom was like, it's like ding dong and they're in the backyard and he goes, whoa, you could really hear that doorbell from far away. Yeah, he's over complimenting <laughs> everything because he's trying, you know, he's in the doghouse. So he'll compliment someone for having a loud doorbell. Pretty cool. Um, and then it is revealed that the driver forgot to bring ranch. Yeah. Sheena's low key freaking out. Tom runs after the driver. Um and it's like, uh, oh, excuse me, sir. I'll go get it. Wait, <laughs> what didn't they bring in? Sorry. Oh, it's ranch. Okay, I'll go catch him. Turns out he didn't bring it, so it was all for nothing. But every, all the girls were like, uh, why is he trying so hard to get the ranch? Like, what is he doing? Why is he being so extra? Why? Since when would he do something like that? But it, it, it is both. It yeah, is both. It totally. He is going above and beyond he's overboard. very conscious yes. that all eyes are on him. Like, you can see he almost is, like, looking to camera or something like he's so hyper aware that like he is not he's being judged yeah at every second you know who would have liked tom sandoval being so extra about the ranch stassi that could miss ranch a, queen that could have been a moment where they bonded it's true she, he was the only one that ran out <laughs> and that could have changed that scene dynamic completely <sighs> yeah do you always just get kind of sad like me when you think about how stassi could have been eating pizza yeah. with them in that same scene and what she would have done yeah i was just explaining to jimmy the the wedding content that we could have had and how much how good it would have been did he <laughs> start to cry yeah, he was sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, the ladies are sitting around the table eating pizza. Yes. And Katie, uh, or I guess Ariana is talking about how Anne was freaking out um, and said that she got fired. Um, and then they show Anne's confessional. And she says that she, like, had a conversation with him. She was crying and, like, knocked on ariana's door and was like i think i just got fired and that ariana was like oh my god like you're gonna be okay um blah 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 and um she they're asking her like well if she's not there who's gonna mediate because that's like her entire job is being the go-between right um and she's like i guess my lawyer which is a strange uh you know i understand that for like dealing about right. the sale of the house and stuff, yeah. but not like, um, like Lala was like, well, but like that doesn't work for like, I think Sheen is the one that's like that. He can't be the one telling you when you can use your, use the tonal. Right. And she's like, well, it is my tonal, um, which is a fun detail that that workout machine in his million dollar gym or whatever. What is, is a tonal? I think it's like, um, it has a screen that shows you workouts and then it has like, um, like bands and like stuff at certain tensions that act as weights oh. that like it's basically like an all in one like gym. Do you think Ariana uses it? <laughs> I don't think she goes in there. Ever? It seems kind of like he's commandeered it. Yeah, I think you're right. Um and this is when we get uh the Tom and Katie outside thing when they have this little flare. I haven't seen this energy between them in a really long time. Uh he goes, anything you want to talk about? And she goes, anything you want to talk about? And he goes, you dirty dog. 
And it's like cute and fun. Yeah, it is cute. It, it's cute. Lighthearted. It's lighthearted. I just, I, I, yeah, a part of me, I like, I just can't imagine a world where Tom Schwartz, like, does not care at all that this happened. Mm-hmm. Well, I was talking to my friends about it and they were saying, like, you know, what if, uh, what war- is the world in which I don't think she necessarily would have been interested in this, but in a world where they historically would have had like an open relationship or something. Yeah. Because it seems like by the way he's talking about this, that he does have cuckery energy. So it's like, what if this whole time when they were together, they were allowed to go separate ways, which he was already doing anyways. (laughs) Right. But if she was allowed to get satchel on the side and he got horny thinking about that he well yeah maybe their marriage would have been stronger yeah i mean when we yeah when we talked about those scenes initially we did say that um tom schwartz really liked uh, the idea of satchel and katie you know potentially together (laughs) it's weird why don't we do when we do softball softball with amy and riley and have tom schwartz as a guest let's do a bunch of softballs and then the hardball (laughs) say are you a cuck (laughs) would that be okay he'd be like cuck (laughs) i don't i don't i don't know i think he I think, in my opinion, Schwartz doesn't let anything bother him ever. Mm -hmm. Like, to a fault. Yeah. And the fact that his best friend, like, would do this and it didn't even require, like, an hour of conversation or much thought at all, it just makes me wonder, like, what you can do to Tom Schwartz that he would ever get mad at someone or or have boundaries with. It goes back to what Katie said, where she was like, you'd be friends with a serial killer. Like, <laughs> serial killer's wet dream. Yeah, wet dream. Like, do you have any, like, boundaries for yourself of what people can do to hurt right. to hurt you if that didn't even cross one line for a second? Right. I wish that I um, had the wherewithal to have asked him, like, some more specific questions. I did say that I had been loving the after show and that it is an interesting new part of the show and I asked if it affects the reunion because it's sort of like a pre-reunion like update and he's like I wouldn't know because I don't watch the show and he said that the reunion is the worst part about being on the show wow he hates it and he said he said he doesn't watch it at all no so at the at the even at the watch parties he's probably just like ignoring it yeah he said he doesn't watch it wow Uh, so that was funny but I was like am I like grilling him right now like I should have asked him like what's your favorite movie was it a good interaction overall he was very nice so you had a little bit of like softball with Tom Schwartz totally Um, but he was in high demand like we were chatting for a while and then a girl came up and was like he and he like all night all he does is go around and pour people shots which I think are like heavily diluted Mm -hmm. like mixed shots but that's like a good business model yeah for sure Um, so anyways they're going back and forth He's like, I'm not bad, FYI. And he's like, but you like roasted me to the high heavens for making out with Raquel, who wasn't even, she was a fringe member of the group. So he didn't think that the punishment deserved the, no, the crime deserved punishment. He didn't (laughs) think the punishment fit the crime. That's right. For him kissing (laughs) someone who was on the fringe when Katie made love to someone he considers a a best friend. And I did like, you know, Katie is always, um, what's a good euphemism for like on your high horse, moral high ground? Mm -hmm. Like Katie didn't want to wade into like, I did something wrong. Yeah. But in her own way, I could tell that she does second guess this decision making. Like she kind of covers her face while she's talking about it. Yeah. When he does say you fucked up, she doesn't fully disagree. Like she does give it back to him and say you did this the entire time. Yeah. But I could tell that Katie is very reflective of this and like doesn't think it was ultimately the best decision she could have made. Right. Even though she would never fully admit that. Yeah. She goes, if this was my one fuck up, you're so fucking lucky. That's what I mean. She acknowledges, she calls it a fuck up. And that's kind of rare for Katie. I I feel like we don't get a lot of Katie ever saying, which Katie's in the right a lot of the times, but we don't get that full mea culpa from Katie often. I was wrong. I treated you badly. Right. Which, yeah. Like, I, I can't even think of one other example of when she ever, because Stassi had to come crawling back to her. Mm-hmm. Kristen always had to come crawling back to her. She's, like, killing it with Ariana now. There's nothing that, like, Ariana's going to do to Katie that's going to, you know? Right. Or that Katie's going to do yeah, to Ariana. Yeah, I feel like she never 
was apologetic to like Sheena for anything no. or Lala. I mean, she never has to be apologetic to Sheena for anything again right. in her life. Yeah. Did, I, I want to say like one one thing that were you surprised that the Sheena Schwartz kiss had absolutely no impact on this episode at all? And it's like <laughs> they've all moved on and forgotten it. And as yeah, she even Katie brings it up. She asked Sandoval if he knew about it, which I was kind of like relieved, even though I'm sure Ariana hated every second of it. But um, everyone was kind of like including him in the conversation a bit. Like yeah. Sheena Katie opened really? up the conversation. Yes. Katie opened up the conversation. And she goes, did you know that these two kiss or whatever? Which it seems as though he lied. <laughs> he lied. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was like, OK, they're talking like she's not just like completely stonewalling him. That's interesting. Um, I thought th- I thought the same thing. For some reason, Katie talking to Sandoval at the beach hit really hard. Yeah, like, she asked well, him like two questions. I know. And I was like, you could tell that Ariana was like, can we please like put a curtain between these two yes. groups like Jesus? Well, while we're talking about it, what because we are going to I want to say that Sandoval did lie in that yeah. moment. He lied to Katie. Uh, Schwartz said that he told Sandoval at the time, or Sandoval yeah. knew at the time, and just kept that a secret the entire time, and that they just talked about it, like, <laughs> recently. Right. So Sandoval knew this his entire, the entire Vanderpool He played Vanderpool it really was, cool. He goes, yeah, I didn't know about that. Yeah, but he did. And then Katie's like, wow, you really kept this a secret, even though he totally knew. So another example of Sandoval just lying his ass the off. Vault. And he is good at it. The Tom Vault. The Tom Vault. The the, Tom imagine Jackson the secrets vault. if we ever open that. There, there was um, there's something else that Kristen was like saying on another podcast. Like she was, she was talking about how like she had access to Tom Sandoval's like computer and <laughs> iPhone after. Uh, I think I sent it to you after him and Ariana started dating. Like she still had full control <laughs> of all of his devices. She's and like she's the girl like, with a dragon tattoo. Totally. And she said that she was going to like cancel an entire trip that he had planned with Ariana because they started dating one month after her. She was going to ruin their lives or whatever. And she didn't do it. And I was like, you all need to like someone, Andy Cohen or whoever needs to say, we are doing a tell all Vanderpump rules book that has all of this extra shit that we haven't known. And like, I don't know how they get it where it's off the record and you don't say who said what, but there's so much shit that I still learn now to this day that I'm like, I want to know that. Yeah. Her having command of those devices, <laughs> this kiss that happened in Vegas, like yeah. they could do an amazing. Yeah. There's so much shit. An oral history of Vanderpump Rules with 50% of the facts that we d- never knew. Yeah. I feel like we're reaching that echelon. Like We are. There was finally those Housewives books. It took a really long time for those to come into fruition. So I feel like they now... Yeah, would do really well. I just learned about the truth about all about the pasta. Like finally, Rachel and Lala independently nipped it in the bud and said what really happened. And I was like, I always thought that was cocaine. I always what assumed, did they say? They said that it actually was about her food. Rachel had a <laughs> a, a meal, a sir meal that she was like waiting for that she was going to eat on her break, and Lala was like hung over or something and hangry, and she actually <laughs> ate ate. Rachel's food and Rachel wanted to eat that. It was like her meal. And then James was like, he he wasn't actually talking. Oh, sorry. It was pasta. And he, and James is like, you did eat her meal, but it's more about that. You're disrespecting my girlfriend. Yeah. You don't take her seriously. Yeah. So it's, it's not about the pasta. It was literal. It's, it's literally not about the pasta. So it's like, <laughs> I totally thought that was Coke. Yeah. That's what everyone, I always took that with a grain of salt because I think I'm like, what are the chances that it was like, so coded i know you know what i mean but it's so much more innocent when you think that it was actually lala (laughs) went on a like she's like that was my staff meal that i got for like 15 percent off and they both independently confirm that so you know it's true right good to know yeah um yeah and then the last thing i'll say about uh tom and katie is that he always takes it one step too far the second they start getting along he goes like yeah like let's get dinner and she's like i don't want to like no and he's like all right that's fine (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And then later on the beach, he's joking about like, I mean, he's really joking at that point And everyone thinks it's funny where he's like, do you want to be my date to the singles event? Like, that was funny. Yeah, he's doing. And she thought little, it was funny. She, Yeah, she's laughing too. I think she's so, she's just so relieved she's not in a relationship with it, him yeah. anymore. And she can find him charming. Totally. She's like, you're an idiot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. So then we cut back to Ariana around the table and she is saying I think it's like the tail end of the Anne conversation and she calls Tom an attempted dog murderer. Yeah. And Brock goes, what was that? Like, what are you talking about? And Tom walks in and he goes, she's talking about me. And um, that she explains that he let Maya in her room 
and then closed the door behind him and left the dog in there. And she had chicken satay skewers on her bedside. And Maya just devoured all of it, yeah. including like the skewers, which is right. insane. Um, what do you call that when humans like can eat any like humans that like are like eat anything <laughs> like, yeah, like eat pica. like paint chips and <laughs> like stuff like Maya yeah, has like, that. Yeah, she's like wild. Like, um, like to eat a paintball. <laughs> it's yeah. He said like, that on the after show that Maya once. What I don't know why he left out paintballs, but she ate a paintball and then shit out paint. Uh, in his opinion and he showed it and he wasn't wrong the shape of italy onto yeah. the couch in paint you should see it it's a perfect rendition the of boot. italy but i'm just like i'm a mad dogs have taste buds like yeah so when you lick a paintball it tastes like absolute shit yeah. so like what what's going on there when dogs eat stuff that is inedible sometimes dogs are dumb i have a i've had dogs and I, they only are attracted to foods that taste like food <laughs> you know what i mean right yeah. I mean, I mean, not, sorry, not to be a stickler about that. I just didn't understand why <laughs> Maya eats Maya? paintballs. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so this is where we get into the uh, nitty gritty. They're going back and forth about like who's at fault, which I don't think he, you know, I'll give her on one end benefit of the doubt because she left that stuff there thinking her door was yes. closed. Yes. That, that's Ariana's case. Sure. I, I mean, that said, if you have a dog like that, you know that, like, nothing can be trusted. Like, it sounds like they repeatedly keep leaving shit out. Yeah, but she would not think that he would open her door, right? But there are other people in the house. Like, shit happens. Like, she doesn't have, like, a lock on the door. Like, I guess this might get be... Uh, that's be the little... case for then, like, you can't live together then. Because... There's someone else in the house. There are other factors at play. That's what they say. She goes, my safe space got invaded. I expected my door to be closed. You went in to fuss with the air conditioning, which at a certain point he like stopped saying that that was the reason. So I like start. I'm starting to doubt that that was what it was. I'm just saying, she left takeout from the night. She fell asleep drunk. Left it on her night. I, I, I'm I, people will say I'm an Ariana defender. You know, but I'm I'm not. I'm I'm like being objective here. Sure. She closed her door. She left food. I'm I'm more. I think I'm more a little bit of a food slob than you. From what I'm g- gaining from how you talk about it, that it's I don't I wouldn't do this all the time. But if I was drunk and I left like I ate tomato soup when I got home and I left like a bowl with half tomato soup and I closed my door, like I would think it was safe from that. Yeah. If I was messy for a second. Right. So like Ariana didn't expect this outcome, and the fact that Tom Sandoval did open the door. And then left her in to where she can only be surrounded with chicken saute smells and want to eat it. It's yeah. like, for me, it's it's pretty clear who's in the wrong. What I don't agree with is that Ariana is saying attempted murder. Right. Because, attempted dog murder, because you it's only because your hatred is, right. is so clouding everything that he does that you would be awful to him right now when you know that wasn't the intention. Right. But I do think it's Tom Sandoval's fault. It's just that. Yeah. Like she absolutely hates him. So she's going to give this the worst possible interpretation that you could ever give. And she'll tell everyone in the world that that's what happened. Right. Um, And so then they're getting into the nitty gritty about who does what for the animals. And he his rebuttal is you haven't changed the litter box for your cat in two years. And then she says she changed it when he was out of town like a week ago. And then for some reason, they have footage of her cleaning the litter box, which I assume was a pickup shot because why would they film her cleaning the litter box unless they knew it was going to come up so your theory is from what i'm sensing your theory is ariana said get me cleaning out the litter box right now yeah because in the extended cut they have sandoval cleaning out the litter box and guess what it's fucking disgusting he said there was 12 shits in the box he throws away it looks like they have one of those like corrugated cardboard boxes that I think technically are disposable, but he throws away the entire litter box like every time. And I thought this exchange, the semantics were strange because so in this exchange, he calls it her cat. Um, So I'm like, there's a little bit of flip flopping about the pets being theirs. But he does say in the after show that she had kitty, kitty predates their relationship. She's had her since a kitten, whereas Mm -hmm. Maya, they adopted together. Um, But her rebuttal, so he says, you never change the litter box in years. 
her rebuttal is that she changed it while he was out of town, which to me implies that she only changed it because he was out of town. And so then by the time he then changed it himself, it was absolutely chock fucking full. And as a cat owner, you change the box every day. Every day. To me, a box like that, my friend in the text thread said, she's like, we all hate changing the box. Like, it's the worst part about having a cat. Like, the litter box sucks. Like, it's just a necessary evil. Like, it is not fun. Uh, But my friend said um, that she envisions it. She's like, you either give your cat the opportunity to use a fresh porta potty or a porta potty at the end of the day at Coachella. And theirs was like day three of Coachella. It's, yeah. like, really bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. And yeah. I'm just saying, like, the if we're going to give her a mark against for anything, it just does appear that she is not one to keep a, <laughs> a tidy home. Oh, okay. I'm not saying she doesn't take good care of her animals. I totally believe her that she's the only one that walks that dog, takes care of everything like yeah. as far as like the no. general care yeah, i'm not gonna leave you out on a limb i you you're right and i i i had um passive viewing when i watched that scene and i didn't take what they actually said to heart but knowing your mind and what it means to clean a litter box i fully read it how you said because when ariana said i cleaned it when you were gone implies that he was always cleaning it and she knew she had to clean it while he was gone so she has to give him that win yeah right like you do clean it the majority of the time. And even her saying, I cleaned out the week you were gone, that's much less frequently than anyone would clean out the litter box, right? <laughs> right. Just doing it that once. <laughs> yeah. And- so it's just like, yeah, I'm like, it's the kind of thing where it's like, I'm not trying to like give him a bone or like make her look bad and that him look good. But it's just like, you guys were together for a very long time. Obviously, like you had certain dynamics and like expectations of each other and like, One of them was seemingly judging from what he says and what I believe is that he kept the house in order and that's not your thing. You do other things. That is not one of them. And that now that you're not together, he resents having to do those things and she doesn't give a shit that he has to do them. Whereas I'm sure before she appreciated them, all of the dumpling latte or whatever. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not def- like I'm not just racing to defend Ariana because I can. I'm just adding a little bit I'm trying to see if there's any nuance here because I fully agree with you in every way that that it's it you know, I read the scene now how you're saying it, but is do you think that the kitty litter zone <laughs> is in a place where she again doesn't feel comfortable? It doesn't matter. Like It must, first of all, smell like absolute shit down there. Like, when you don't change the box, it smells so bad. Like, cat piss. Everyone knows what cat piss smells like. It's bad. So... Is it much more rank than traditional piss? Yeah. And it's like, it's just sitting... Like, it's not like it's being flushed. It's just sitting there, like, in your house. Yeah. Like, so the fact that she could even... Either of them could exist with it sitting there like that is concerning to me. Um, it's giving like dorm cat, like you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's let, let's let the let's let the little turtle cuties. Um, you know. Yeah, I want to ha- hear from the cat owners in the uh, community. Yeah. This could be a situation where they teach Kitty to use the toilet. Right. It might be too late. She's pretty old. You kind of have to do that at the beginning. Really. Yeah. There's a whole process. Okay. But I would love to see that. that that's a storyline I'm interested in. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so fun if Ariana taught Kitty. Is is Kitty her only cat? Yeah. Can I, I, I know we're like, I, I know we're <laughs> doing bad on time, but um, I don't remember them getting Maya together. I know, me neither. Like Maya was their joint dog. I know. Why was that not a huge deal on Vanderpump Rules when they said, or adopting a dog together. It I might don't have remember. been during COVID or something. You know what? This was the non-pet era of Vanderpump Rules when yeah, they didn't, they didn't show give any of shit. their pets. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, they're going she, toe-to-toe. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, so this is where Lala in her confessional is like, uh, <laughs> she's giving her shit about the skewers and she goes, didn't you do a trash bag commercial? Like, don't you know how to throw out your trash? Which is funny. Okay. I, I, so I, 
okay, I, <laughs> I, I don't agree. Oh, but not because I'm trying to race to defend Ariana. I just think that it had it had written comedy a little bit to me. <laughs> and also, I don't. I just because I don't know where it's coming from. Like I don't know where this anti Ariana stance is coming from from Lala. That I'm like it kind of lands like a thud for me. And it felt like she wanted to get a was a pot shot on Ariana to use that joke. And like she thought about it, but like why? <laughs> But I just so I was sitting there watching with Jimmy. Ariana explains the skewers, the that she spent six grand doing the emergency vet, all of this stuff. And I was like, is anyone going to be like, why did you have chicken skewers in your bedroom? And he was like, no, no one will. And I was like, la la will. And like the second I said that, she was like making a glad bag uh, joke. And I was yeah. like, not only did she bring it up she had a zinger yeah but is there a hint of a little bit of like brand deal jealousy there <laughs> probably i mean yeah she's like i have a roster i know every deal you did but it, well, i agree that lala is like coming off it's too much it's like she's trying to plot out and carve out her own position and point of view moving forward to because... the detriment of her relationship with ariana because they're not that close i guess yeah <laughs> so their their relationship is a facade and Ariana doesn't care give a shit what Lala does. So every time Lala goes, I'm kind of liking Tom Sandoval, she's like, Okay, I don't care. We yeah. don't we're not friends. Yeah. So like this relationship doesn't matter. And yeah. Lala would rather chart a course with Tom Sandoval's future and make fun of Ariana because she doesn't care. Yeah. She's That's like, the... You're probably gonna quit, so <laughs> That's just it. It's like I, I think that, that that explains it. Lala does not give a fuck about Ariana. Ariana does not give a fuck about Lala. It's only for the pretense of the show that we even think that they have a relationship. Yeah. And that's why Lala is doing this to Ariana. Yeah. Yeah. She's just like, I'll be the one to take her down. <laughs> yeah. She just decided halfway through that she wants to do that. Yeah. Um, and then so uh she, yeah, uh, I think Tom... She talks about how callous he is, and and then it gets really heated to it. Yeah, she's like, she says, um, don't look at me and get the fuck... She says, get the fuck away from me more times than Sutton says, name him. Yeah, get the fuck away. Get the fuck she away. She says it at least like six times. Never look me in the eyes again, you fucking piece of shit. And he goes, don't look me in the eyes either. <laughs> um, and then she goes, guys, I'm being harassed. I'm going to call 911. Yep. I was like, huh? She dialed nine. Um, I, I, okay, I, I want to talk about this now because then I won't bring it up in, in a future Tom Sandoval scene. But I have this thing where I like I forget the where we're at in the timeline, and so like I yeah. were, I like, but I have to go back to the timeline of yeah. Tom Sandoval and get into his head. W- what the hell? <laughs> Why the hell does he feel in, indignant and have? righteous fury yeah. moral righteous fury against ariana three months after they just had the reunion where he was crying and and, and screaming with 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 pain about how he hurt her yeah why instantly did he just not say in every scene whatever ariana says i'm gonna take this and i'm just going to like I am just going to let her have her full wrath at me in every in every scene and never say one thing against her because yeah. I did her so fucking dirty. Yeah. And it's like, because so much, so much time has gone by, we're like, okay, I get now why Tom Sandoval in this in, in this time period would be rolling his eyes at the fury that Ariana has for him. Yeah. But it's not that time. Right. This is three months after. Right. Why did he think that it was a good idea? Like you're you're putting salt in the wound. Yeah. You're not only Ariana has the right at this point to fucking scream bloody murder at you for everything you say. And he's going, when is the lawyer going to get back to me? When the (laughs) fuck are you going to get out of my house? Yeah. When like, God, she can't even wipe her own ass. It's like (laughs) that was in the. uh, That's in it. But I'm just saying, like, (laughs) why does he? Why? I know the answer, which is like. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. And he's fine doing this. But, like, I can't believe that his strategy in season 11 was not to just be head down, take take anything she wanted to give him because he hurt her so bad, and try to make an emotional connection and just say sorry anytime she even looked over at him. Yeah. I know that would suck for 
I, I, I personally, it wouldn't suck to me entertainment wise. <laughs> I would have liked to see what someone does to try to like redeem themselves in someone's eyes that they hurt the most instead of this petulant fucking kid vibe that he has. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like why? Yeah. Why would he choose this, this reaction yeah. to Ariana? When he just, when he gets cornered, it's like game over. Like he cannot do it. He can't, which we've said it before. He cannot be seen as the villain and yeah. Ariana's painting him as the villain, even yeah. though he, what he did is objectively villainous to her. He can't tolerate it for one second and no wonder it's driving her mad yeah. in my mind. And basically, I mean, at least Sheena, Lala, and James, this whole episode are saying that uh, Ariana's got to let this go for her own sanity. Yeah, I was I was thinking about that. And I was thinking, like, does that help? Like, does that help you? Like, yeah, to, I mean, like if I hated someone, let's say I hated someone in my life. Yeah. And I didn't see them all the time. Yeah. Is it so much better for me to <laughs> give up that hate? Like, I can't just have like fun hate towards someone <laughs> because I feel bad about it. It hurts they me. They do say it's uh, like drinking poison and hoping the other person will die. Yeah, but we all have haters that surround us that hate <laughs> us every waking moment of our lives. Yeah. And they can choke. Yeah, they can choke on that for sure. But I, <laughs> but also, again, like just to put in like James and Lala saying, get over it. You know, it is, it's all about like where this was in the timeline. Right. I mean, I do get like... I mean, the thing is, it's like you can't even have a conversation about it because it's such an unnatural. The thing is, it's unnatural that she has to hang out with him because of the show, which is why it's so strange that they decided to stay living together also. Right, because you created an environment where you actually see him even more than you would have if you weren't filming. And you have to interact with him in a a way more intense way than even being on a show with him. Right, and like I understand there's like nuance to her not wanting to forfeit ownership and that like she thinks moving out would hurt her case or whatever. Um, But I'm like, I feel like there could have been like something in writing that would protect you against that. I just think... You would go so insane living with someone for a year to the point that it's absolutely not fucking worth yeah. it. You talk th- this is drinking the poison, hating and drinking the poison. Living with someone is drinking the poison every day. That's what yeah. they're trying to say. James, I agree with them. James was saying in the after show that um he was like living in the same house under the same roof with someone affects you on like a psychic level like i feel like ali has been rubbing off on him he was like he's like you're dreaming in that house like you're you're like blending your like vibes together which is true it's true and lala said that too she goes why would you want to come home to your safe space and have that like dark aura that you absolutely bad for your like nervous system well but but i am surprised that actually we did get ariana thinking this At that time, she does acknowledge that she's going to move out at this time. Like, it does get too much for her. She only stood, like, with that stance for about two months, and then it got unfeasible. Yeah, and she probably really wasn't home most During that era at all. Do you want to go to beach? Because we're, you know, you and I are kind of running along. Yeah. Is there anything we missed? Let's do it. Was there, um, I mean, the only, the two uh, bonus scenes that come before the beach were... Tom, Tom, and Kyle Chan go to paella night. Um, And this is where, I mean, they mostly just talk about shit that we've already talked about. But Kyle Chan does go, she had chicken skewers in her bedroom? (laughs) Like, Kyle Chan was questioning that, which I was like, okay. Um, uh, Well, yeah, but again, (laughs) I felt like he was just saying that to, to get Tom Sandoval's favor. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I don't I, I, know I'm really going to ask this. Have you Chan's ever... vibe is. But you, you've never left food in your room? Not my bedroom. <laughs> I don't. I guess I don't want to get too personal, but like, <laughs> I, I guess I don't do this often, but it's not so crazy for me to have had... I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, well, I also you're... in, uh, to give you, uh, you know, a little bit, like my bedroom for the past 10 years... Our bed was in a nook, so I didn't even have bedside tables. I had, like, a shelf. So it would be, like, literally, like, it would have to be, like, in my bed. Yeah. But I would say, generally, I really don't eat in bed. 
<laughs> okay, I don't either, and I don't want people to think like I'm always eating in my room and I always keep stuff. But it's just not so unfathomable to me to do this. To the fact where Kyle Chan's going chicken saute in your room, I'm just like, I don't know, it's not that wild. She doesn't like to eat in the kitchen because Tom Sandoval is is you know doing stuff in there. But yeah. whatever. I guess I, it's I, just like the meat of it all and like leaving <laughs> meat out in the wild for I'll, hours. I'll, I'll grant it. This is a poll for the little turtle cuties. We'll put it up. Is it absolutely weird to keep chicken saute overnight? Hashtag skewers are sick. Hashtag skewers are sick or hashtag I skew towards having skewers in my room. (laughs) Is that okay? I just bumped the mic. Um, You're making it harder for them to agree with you. (laughs) That's right. right. Uh, On YouTube or wherever you comment, if you think it's fine to have skewers in your room, I skew with having skewers in my room. If you absolutely agree with Amy and Kyle Chan and Tom Sandoval that this is the worst thing in the world or or you would never do it, hashtag, what was it? Skewers Skewers are sick. Skewers are sick. That's Let the audience decide. Okay. Um, In her honor, I'm going to have shrimp skewers in bed tonight you are in her <laughs> i'm gonna leave them oh for at least six hours why don't you just see if it stinks <laughs> let a dog in yeah um okay anyways and then um quickly there's a deleted scene where lisa james alley and james's mom go to dinner and lisa asks how hippie is doing with the pussy cats mm-hmm. which i thought was fun that she called them that me too um, and James reveals that Allie doesn't get to sleep with Mr. Banks anymore. They give Hippie, a.k.a. Graham, rule of the roost in the bedroom, and the cat is the one that gets locked out. I, once you alerted me to that fact, I am sad for Mr. Banks because Mr. Banks went from, like, being curled up in their leg nooks in the bed, potentially, sleeping with them every single night of Allie and James' relationship to then getting sent out of the room so that Graham could sleep there instead. I'm saying, I'm thinking crate for hippie. Yeah, I, I was thinking... Sleep crate. Well, they said... So then they also say that he loves to chase Mr. Banks around completely. Like, they can't have him in the same room because hippie wants to race <laughs> around and try to catch Mr. Banks, right? Not cool. I'm still very concerned about this dynamic. Do you? Uh, I had this invention idea for households that are like this, just very quickly. What if there was like a remote control fake cat that you could buy <laughs> that just was kind of like a Roomba that had all of the fur and smell of a cat <laughs> and it, it was doing erratic, weird uh, movements around the house so that the cat could have could kind of walk around and it, the dog would be distracted by that cat. <laughs> you Roomba. don't think that would be enforcing the behavior? <laughs> no, it would be, it would, uh, well, I guess you're right. You mean, <laughs> you mean hippie would be more. He'd be it, trained. He'd be a killing, train killing machine. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That was not a good invention. Okay, um, you're right. But yeah, this is where they tell Lisa about Katie and Max and she goes, I know Max. He worked for me for years. Yeah. And she's like, she had sex with him? That is not cool. Yeah. I, at least I didn't think it was cool. And, and then it, she implies that he has a big dick. Yeah. So word has gone around that, <laughs> yeah, I mean, which is, you know, I think it's, I think it's, I'm not as, I'm not as mad about the Max thing. I'm, I'm okay. If, if Schwartz is okay that Katie and Max made love, I have to be okay with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. She yeah. can do whatever she wants. Yeah. Um. Okay. Beach day. Beach day. Okay. They all have to go to the beach. Um, and uh, yeah, it, well, <laughs> these scenes. Seemingly the same beach as last season. Yeah, they, they really wanted the exact same uh, episode as <laughs> last year's very good Tower 12 episode. Beach. If it ain't broke. Yeah. And I've never seen them do basically just a recreation of a scene like a popular scene like this was just that and they had the same plan to like go to a bar afterward right they just wanted to recreate that moment right um schwartz throws sheena a capri sun yeah she's like we've been watching the old seasons and she was always in a capri sun and then on the valley the episode right after this um jesse the psychopath is having a capri themed party and Jax goes the only capri i know is capri son and listen <laughs> britney loses her fucking mind she thinks it's the funniest thing she's ever heard they had to, yeah they had to edit out how much laughter she was doing she, like, she was can't still... 
move her face or like jawline because of her surgery she got and so she's just like making this like weird face and covers her mouth it's like <laughs> she laughs at jacks a lot there's another joke in the valley that he uh gives to her and it causes her to erupt with laughter when he's talking about should we buy this 18 million dollar home or whatever oh, she yeah. starts laughing her ass off i think it's really <laughs> the bar is low i guess um and then i feel like we covered a lot of this but yeah um upon katie asking sandoval if he knew that schwartz and sheena kissed in vegas um sheena's like to be fair like all of these guys have been flirty with me, even you, to Sandoval. And he goes, more like I was the recipient of flirtiness. And then Brock goes, is that what you told Rachel when you started that whole thing? Which I'm like, why the fuck would you say that when Ariana's there? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, so there's a lot to parse there. Those three different statements. <laughs> yeah. So Sheena says, you all flirted with me at some point in your lives, which I was like, whoa, that's kind of shocking. <laughs> right. I mean, and then Tom Sandoval says, I was the recipient of flirting. So that means... Sheena was flirting. He says she was flirting with him and he would just give her back that energy. I could see it. Yeah. Sheena, mm -hmm. Sheena like, she likes to flirt or, yeah. or did at a, a certain era of her life. Yeah. So Tom Sandoval was kind of nipping that in the bud, that theory that Sheena had. And then Brock's um, segue to me didn't make any sense. No. He said, is that what you said to Rachel to get that whole thing started? Did he like, say what? Is he saying, is he asking like, did you also say that Rachel was the one flirting with you? And that you were just the recipient? Right. But and then, then you, like, fucked her for a year. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it felt like exactly what Tom Sandoval said, low-hanging fruit, just to bring Rachel into the moment. Right. And Brock had, a, like, I think five of these producer <laughs> moments. Like, yeah. Like, five of these, like, let's move this story along. Who are you seeing? When will you and Ariana talk? Mm -hmm. I really think you and Ariana should have a scene together. Uh, let's talk about... The cheating right now. Right. Like, he, he would kind of, he needs to dial it back. Yeah. And then Ariana's, like, immediately furious. She's like, can you have this conversation not in front of me? And blame Sandoval. Yeah, and he goes, I didn't bring it up. And she's like, well, you're the one who did the thing that we're talking about. So, like, So it's fuck disgusting. Off. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Which is, like, uh, it's, like, what Sheena said when they talked in the alley where she's like, I wouldn't have talked about your affair on my podcast if you didn't have an affair in the first place. Like, he, like, really can't win. No. He's like, I would never... He's like, I wish he didn't fucking say that, too. Like, I don't want to talk about that. He he was... Uh, Sandoval was getting annoyed with Brock a lot this episode. Yeah. About him trying to, like, open those conversations. Yeah. Then it's, like, the Anne stuff. Um, Katie says she met Sandoval's new assistant, Craig. And she goes, does Anne not work for you anymore? And he's like, I didn't fire her. I told her... Uh, we were going to take some time off. And she was like, I think she thinks she got fired. And he's like, just give me a minute. He's like, I need to deal with, uh, there are protocols in place. And they're like, protocols? And he's like, yeah, like HR. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I mean, I understand that he said that he has like workers comp and like payroll or whatever. But I'm like, it's it felt like he was trying to sound much more buttoned up than he really is. Yeah, I, I well, I mean, I will. Ariana like says he does not have an HR department um, <laughs> at all. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what what to believe there. I do think that he at a certain point made enough money to like have a company, like a loan out company or whatever. I'm you know, sure it's like, probably like tied in. I'm sure they have like Schwartz and Sandy's uh, yeah. LLC or whatever, which like it makes sense to pay people through because then for your like taxes or whatever. Like I'm sure that it's like buttoned up in a certain way, but he's acting like, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it, her role seems very undefined. I, yeah. I mean, I think he needs to let Anne go. If you overheard her saying she would want to work with someone else, like let her go. Right. Like you don't need to like hang, you know, hang on to this Anne assistant thing. And he already hired someone else. So, right. Um, and then this is when they get into the pet conversation. Cause James is like, well, if, she's fired who's going to look after Maya when she's not there and Ariana's like well she's not like a pet sitter like that's not her job and he goes do you feel like your pets are safe right now like did he mean like in this moment like who's yeah. with them right now yeah and she's like yes I do and then he goes do you agree uh Tom that the pets are um hers and not like both of yours and he's like no and um she goes I paid the adoption fees um and he goes, that was the one bill she paid. 
Yeah. And he's kind of being a little <laughs> zinger. Yeah. He's doing a little zinger as his back is turned to the group. Yeah. He's like kind of being a little stinker back there. Right. Which again is like such a like, like a, like, I guess maybe in a court of law, um, maybe that would hold up. And I think the evidence basically, I think we all can agree that they're really more hurt pets. Like she had the cat, she had Charlotte, and then it seems like they got Maya together. But I think she was already in the lifestyle of having a dog. So yeah. I assume she she said she's the only one that walked her, gave her a bath, um, did all that stuff. And I believe that. Yeah, but I don't I don't agree with her that whoever paid for the adoption like owns the dog. No. I, she's only saying that because she hates him. No, because that's like a receipt. And like, she would never use that logic about anything else. No, they're in like, to, like lawyer mode. Yeah. So she's, she's, you know, she's, she's just being... Yeah. Yeah. She's just, her hatred is welling up for him and she's saying stuff like that, you know, and he's again trying to like fight this, which I don't understand why. Again, like I already talked about, I don't understand why he wants to pick her apart at this time. Right. Like for any reason, except that he can't look bad in front of his friends or on camera or for anyone. Yeah. And so he's giving it back to her and then he has to leave because she says, stop talking to me. Don't talk yeah. to me. She says it like 10 times. Yeah. And he gets away. He's like, obviously, beach day's ruined. I'm going to go to the next bar that we're all <laughs> supposed to go to as a yeah. group. I'm just going to go there early. And the Lala arrives, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And then Ariana kind of goes off on the friend group after Sandoval leaves. And she's like. Ariana does. Oh, what did I say? Lala. Oh, I'm sorry. Ariana. Yeah. Ariana goes like, just so you know. Tom Sandoval is a misogynist, a fucking misogynist, and he only listens to men. So if you could, like, speak up for me and say, why the fuck are you talking to Ariana like that? That'd be really helpful because mm-hmm. it's disrespectful. And she's telling James this. Mm-hmm. She's telling Brock this. She, yes. Schwartz is a lost cause. Brock's but, like, I got to produce this scene, mate. He's like, come on. He already walked away. <laughs> uh, the, he's like, he's like, he's like, his tail is between his legs. Like, what did you expect us to do? But she's like. Why are you letting him talk to me like this? He will only listen to you. Yeah. And he's talking like, and then Lala is like uh, kind of advocating for the devil or that's what yeah. Ariana accuses him. She's like, you know, whatever. She starts to defend him for even a second. Lala goes, he doesn't need any more advocates, the devil mm-hmm. uh, at all. And and then I, I kind of love this Ariana moment because you and I have, um, you know, this edit has not been good to Ariana. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people agree that Ariana and Katie are not getting a lot of shine because they're focused on something about her, which we know is not open. And they're just not having scenes that pop. And the, and the editors are choosing to focus on Tom Sandoval and his redemption journey. But this moment actually struck a chord with me after seeing how Tom Sandoval is acting in all these scenes, being a petulant little kid. Mm-hmm. And when Ariana goes, what the fuck? Do you expect me to do when I'm sitting across from this guy in all these fucking scenes? Do you yeah, expect she me says, to? You're shoving him down my throat, which I'm like, the show. The show is. Yeah. But she's like, but what do you expect her to do? You think I'm going to have a nice fucking time at the beach when this man that I fucking hate is chiding me and talking about lawyer house bills yeah. and all this shit? It's like, it, it, I just, I understood her exasperation and it puts everything back into perspective again. Yeah. You know, it like puts us back in that moment. I'm like, I, I fully agree. The show is forcing you to have scenes with this person. You don't want to, you yeah. hate him. And then people get mad at you for having this toxic anger, which is very justified in yeah. the moment moment and it's like it's it's a can't win situation right and i finally i fucking i felt it I yeah was like, that fucking hit i know it's like really hard because it's like if she leaves the show he wins kind yes. of in he a way wins. it's the home yeah he wins yeah and you know that friend group is going to be like get back in here tom yeah. like you can well, that's what she said she's like he would love nothing more than for me to fuck off yeah and for him to just like sidle up and just resume his yeah. place and turn everyone against me or whatever which like they would you know and it's like the internet is sort of already saying like i saw a meme of her by the way i'm just gonna shout out um katie looked fucking incredible at the reunion i i'm rare to give katie compliments but she looked sick i thought so too she was really good that so, that meta- it's kind of metallic yeah, right silver she silver. was really good i'm gonna say that whoa i know i was like wow who else did you think um, looked good <laughs> well, Lala and Sheena wore like prom dresses. They sucked. Um, and I thought Ariana's dress was cool. Her body was rocking. But I saw a meme that said um, it was Ariana posing and it says it's giving my final season. And I was like, 
is that good? Yeah, you want. Like, yeah, you don't want. Because it's like, how do you talk about it? You go, okay, in real terms, you say someone has outgrown the show. Like, Stasi has a little bit of like a a sheen on her now that she doesn't participate. Like she's risen above. Yeah. She has like her own little mm-hmm. situation going on. And you can say like, she's too good. I'm putting that in quotes for the show. Or like, she's like respecting her family dynamic and mm-hmm. not stooping down to be on this like shit show thing. So in, in reality terms, you're saying, yeah, if Ariana left the show, especially the way things are framed right now and how she has to hang out with Sandoval, you would say, yeah, the healthy and wise choice would be to step away and be like, this is a horrible yeah. place. Yes. But in the sense that it's the only reason we know who she is yes. and essentially consume her as a personality, her leaving is a loss. Yes. Yes. So, well, I, uh, yes. We, it's like, how do we talk about it? Yeah. I, oh, I'll just, I talk about it like, as a fan of this show, I want Ariana, who's been a prominent cast member on this show, to stay as long as she can for the benefit of Vanderpump Rules. And I don't long for the day when she says, fuck this show, I don't want to be a part of it anymore because I'm too successful. We shouldn't want that as Vanderpump Rules fans. But if she hates it so much in its current form, it's also not fun to watch if she hates it and doesn't want to participate in certain ways. So I'm speaking as a viewer. Sure. As a human who cares about Ariana's well-being as a a person, if it's unhealthy and she absolutely hates it and she's forced to be with her ex... But that affects as a viewer, too, because, I mean, now they're starting to force them to meld. Um, But, like, the first part of the season, we were seeing, like, the things she didn't want to participate in and, like... Um, like if, if it's completely inorganic and painful, it's not fun to watch either. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think if she was having more fun on the show and she enjoyed it, we would get a sense of that and we would rally around her and love it. But because she feels like she's pained to be in all these situations, it's not fun to watch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I, I just, as a huge fan of Vanderpump Rules, Unless it's incredibly toxic for her, I want her to stay on as long as she can be on. And I think that she'll find a way to have fun again. This is just an anomaly in someone's life. (laughs) There's a whole world where Tom Sandoval fucking flops harder or whatever happens or Jax comes back and all the attention is on Jax. Like, There's so many permutations Mm -hmm. of Vanderpump rules that could still happen if they were given... Two more seasons, and Ariana could have a dream on this show. Mm-hmm. This is just a horrible time. <laughs> Stassi yeah. had a horrible time on yeah. Vanderpump Rules. You know what I mean? It's like it's yeah. it's cycles. Sure. This is a bad cycle for right. Ariana. Yeah, it just happened at what could be considered the tail end of its legacy. Yeah, but not if you're asking <laughs> me. I think five more seasons of Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> um all right. Well, speaking of, I feel like the tail end whips into the valley, which maybe we can just do a top line like Fiverr. Yeah. How are we? Yeah. How are we feeling? We do we want to like power through this, right? Yeah. Let's just. I feel like. I mean, power through like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, just like a quick overview, like the main topics, okay. like um. So I would say you know this episode, doubting Dodie, yeah. um. The main thing was that there was a racial allegation, yeah, um, which then came full circle by the end of the episode to recalling Kristen yes. getting fired, which I was honestly surprised that they brought up again. Me too. They were probably surprised <laughs> to be bringing it up again. Yeah. They probably were very surprised that Kristen said that yeah. within the universe of the Valley so that it could be brought up against her within three episodes of the show. Like right. Kristen brought it into the universe, right. which is what was shocking. Which to me. is like, I guess the main difference of this show is that yes. they can break that wall yeah. more than Vanderpump does. Yeah. So you, you, you're that, that's that the entire episode was that yeah. it was that before the show, Janet, who I think is um, well-versed in Bravo, knowledge Mm -hmm. she's been on vanderpump rules sheena said that she wanted to have a threesome with max and dana at some point she's very knowledgeable about what works 
and they had their own private uh, text. What's what's it when you have yeah, a group thread. chat where they were talking about the possibility that Michelle, Jesse's wife, mm-hmm. might be a conservative slash Republican because she said something about the don't say gay bill, like that it might be worthwhile or something. Uh-huh. So immediately Janet ex- extrapolated that to mean that she is a homophobe. Mm-hmm. And also if she's conservative, she could be a racist. Mm-hmm. That was said with Zach and Jasmine. Yeah. So then Zach told Kristen. Yeah. And then the minute that Kristen had the opportunity to say, to bring shit stirring, Mm -hmm. like as a focus on the show, she talked about how Janet was the one who was truly stirring shit on a, about a conversation that never happened on camera and might have never been brought up on camera had Kristen not just brought it up. Right. Yeah. And it sounds like, I mean, because I thought Janet did come off well here because she was very clear about what happened or like what she said like she I was think, like i'll say it i think she's lying her ass off you do yeah okay i think she i think she you think she said she's racist yeah for sure i think that i can i mean i can so easily imagine a world where they heard something that someone said and they assume that jesse and michelle are both republicans yeah and they it's a for some people, it's a very easy extrapolation to just say if then you, you know, I have to wonder, is she a homophobe? Right. Is she a racist? Right. So I think those words were used mm-hmm. and Zach is quoting Janet accurately. Mm-hmm. But because there is this telephone game that they can blame it on, yeah. Janet is fully leaving Kristen to ha- take the full brunt. Like Kristen just originated this out of nowhere. And then even Zach is leaving Kristen in the lurch saying, no, mm-hmm. racist was never, <laughs> ever mentioned. Yeah. Why would, and Kristen says it multiple times, why the fuck would I ever bring up the R word <laughs> on this show had it not been said? But still, you could say, why did you ever do that? Why would right. you? But I think it's because it was truly said yeah. by Janet and Kristen brought it up. Even knowing that the ramifications of that would be very bad for her or not fully knowing. Right. Yeah. I guess uh, lying or not, I felt like I felt comforted by Janet being like, I, I liked that she asked that question. Which like, question did she That ask? she was like, is Michelle bad? <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> like, you... I was like, she said it in sort of, at least in her recounting, in sort of, she seems smart, I guess. It's like, she seems like... um. I think, first of all, I'll also say that her husband isn't made for TV. He's like a normal human being. Jordan. Is that his name? <laughs> I'm still having Did, trouble. Is it someone else named Jordan? No, no, no. I think, is I, that I, his sorry. name? I think it's Jordan and Janet. Okay. I, 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 well, he's just a normal human being. He's yeah, he's not just, a yeah. fun to yeah. watch. Um, but anyways, I, I was just like, I believed... W- I think it was a valid question to be asked, and I don't know what's going on in Jesse and Michelle's house, but I think it's a house of horrors. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, okay. I'll... And I thought it was what? Who was was it? Jesse, the one that turns it on Kristen and says, "Weren't you fired for being racist?" Yes, he says. Which was fun to watch. Gotta he said, "Yeah." He says, "You were the one who was fired off your show for being an actual racist." He's like, Kristen, "Am I wrong?" Yeah, and Kristen goes, "What the fuck did you just say?" It's like. If you're going to level, even bring that into the universe on this show, then Jesse does have every right to say, you you were fired yeah. for this. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And, and made Kristen have to deal with it, which is fine. Like, that's yeah. why I can't imagine why Kristen would ever want to talk about these issues on her show. Right. But I, I'm not, I don't, I, I don't agree with you that, that if Janet made the leap to flippantly calling Michelle racist and then lies her ass off and says, I never said that. If I was if I was accusing her of being a racist, or if I thought she was a racist, I would never be friends with her. I'm sorry. I believe that you made that leap. Uh-huh. I believe that it wasn't so hard for you to make the leap. Yeah. Of I kind of bought her um, good-hearted line about that she was concerned that she had fallen into a bad algorithm. That felt very like mommy group. Like, I think that one of the other mommies has gotten onto the bad TikTok. <laughs> It's it's unfortunately not so hard for me to imagine <laughs> Janet absolutely slandering someone that she thought was conservative. Do you guys think hashtag Janet slander or hashtag dark TikTok? So is hashtag Janet slander is 
Janet slandered Michelle by by calling her a racist yeah. because she said that thing about don't say gay bill. Yeah. And then hashtag, what'd you say? <laughs> Dark TikTok. Dark TikTok. Hashtag Janet just blamed uh, Michelle for getting a bad TikTok algorithm and never, ever assumed that she was racist. Yeah. It never, ever said the word racist. Uh-huh. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Two different hashtags. Because I could see it both ways. I just think I believed if she was lying, I to me, I think she pulled off like with finesse. She did. Saying, she, that's, that's, you know what I mean? That's why I give her credit. She <laughs> she had, what's that, hot potato? Yeah. She had hot potato. Mm-hmm. She had <laughs> she hot. She had hot potato. <laughs> she had hot potato in her hands and she went, Kristen's got it. Mm-hmm. And then left Kristen holding it and it blew up in Kristen's face to the point where Jesse goes, you were a racist. It's right. like the worst hot potato you could ever be holding. Yeah. And Zach left Kristen, his best friend, in the fucking lurch. Yeah. Zach de- deserves a lot of scorn, in my opinion, if Janet actually said that. Yeah. And I know, Jan- I know Janet said it. Yeah. I mean, allegedly, well, if that's... Also, I know we said last week that you feel like Zach has like zingers at the ready. Yeah, he's he, got a he's uh, got a the you were driving the bus. He's got an earbud in his ear. I was like, that's giving scripted. He's got <laughs> he's got um um like some sort of device on his head or or <laughs> or in his ear that yeah. is giving him those one liners. Yeah. He's he's um I, I don't want to be too mean, but um he he takes me out of scenes because he feels like almost like the audience surrogate where he's reacting way more than any scene should. Like mm-hmm. he's he's being very performative and it's not good energy for the Valley, unfortunately, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. I also didn't realize, gosh, I'm really just so bad at the names. What is the other like girl's name that they revealed has a girlfriend? Jasmine. Jasmine. I thought that was a fun. Me too. Like, I'm like, I, I like that, you know. We're integrating some yeah. different types of relationships. Who do you think was best dressed at the Ca- Capri party? Oh, God. I love that Kristen was just straight up wearing Birkenstocks. <laughs> she like, can't be stopped. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's fun. Um, and Luke is getting some balls, you know. He had balls, too. He had yeah. two balls uh, <laughs> last week. Yes. When he was. I loved when Luke stood up and said, yeah. don't talk to Kristen like that. Yeah, him v. Jesse. That was awesome. And I mean, Jesse, like... We already said it. Calm Jesse, down. Yeah. Like, I, Luke hates Jesse. He goes, I'll be damned if that sack of shit who twisted my, my girlfriend's nipple is going to talk shit about. Like, he was like, I like. First the titty twister, now this. Yeah. he. I like he called him a sack of shit. I, I, Luke is being fun. Yeah. I'm proud of him. And, and I am so Kristen pilled. I'm so, I'm yeah. like in the tank for Kristen that um, I, yeah. that's why I'm so anti Janet or just believe she's lying. Yeah. I believe Kristen would have never said that. If it wasn't true, Mm -hmm. because I believe Kristen has learned her lessons and tells the truth now. And I love that Luke finally, no reservations, just said, you know, like, stood up for her. No reservations. What's that? (laughs) You mean like, um, like uh, uh, Anthony Anthony Bourdain. Bourdain. My brain had to hit the sound clip. No (laughs) reservations. Oh, is that what, um. (laughs) <laughs> is that what it says on that on that show? I've only watched a few episodes. <gasps> what? Yeah, I, I really I like it. Oh, you gotta I watch really, it. I want to watch the last one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sad. <laughs> I've read all his books. I love. He's that cool. Man. I've never. I was actually. I started to read Kitchen Confidential. It's great. Um. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait. Did we talk about the valley enough? I think we got. We hit the main points. I'll just say. Again, that Jesse is scary. Um, Jesse's he, scary, but... He accuses his wife of not loving Capri as much as he does. Um, their therapy session was wild. It, it, good. He he goes, the life coach goes, when was the last time you made beautiful love to each other? And uh, she says, or, or sorry, when were you last attracted to him? She goes, don't ask me that. Yeah, and he's like three, three years, years and nine months ago, which I assume is how old their child is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's bleak stuff. Um, I hope she escapes, um, racist or not. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I hope she still escapes, um, Jesse's clutches. Um, um I want to say lastly that Jax, even Jax was kind of shocked at what was going on at the dinner. He's like, wow, I can't believe this. It has nothing to do with me. And it was kind of shocking. Yeah. But I want to say one final thing just to wrap it all up. Cause we started talking about Jax is that, even though I we love Jax at his most outspoken sort of like egotistical self, I do think he should watch that hubris now in this current era 
because unfortunately you never know when the tides are going to turn again and he (laughs) could just get fired again very easily beware the ides of march yeah and i didn't even want to say it because we're so far past and it, (laughs) it makes me scared to think about next march but Jax, you're on the road to what got your life in shambles three years ago. Yeah, especially so. now that his relationship is on the rocks. Like, I feel like their relationship is sort of the foundation of this show. Yeah. Although, if they break up on the valley and then we get to watch them be single on the valley, that would be great for the valley. I think for me, I want them just all on Vanderpump rules still. Yeah. Jax, Brittany, Kristen, Luke, Jesse <laughs> gets to, of course... Come over to Vanderpump Rules. Well, he's in Hollywood anyways. So. Yeah, that's easy for him. And then I think I do like, I'm okay with Janet so far as a cast member because, like you said, she's pretty crafty that she got out of that yeah. situation. So I could, I, I don't know, maybe it, maybe it is good to just have the Valley and have two shows. I don't know. Maybe I'm I wrong. I know, it's like a conundrum. Yeah. But... Okay, cool. All right, well, let's, Wait. should we say goodbye? Do we sound good? Please. This is the <laughs> wildest episode that Amy and I have ever done. I can't believe it. Like, we're a year in, and you and I finally got a beautiful studio to record in. I, yeah. How long have we been here? <laughs> it's like The Shining. We just live here now. Yeah. Did you like this experience? It was cool. It's nice being so confident that it's going to turn out well, because usually we're like, did this work? <laughs> I'm like pressing my laptop button, making sure that our audio waves are recording. We didn't so even this- piss. We didn't piss, which is wild. So I want to say, let's do, let's do, because this could be a good episode. Maybe people will like this. I don't know if it was good. I think, think so. B plus. We might get in trouble. It was like kind of like, you know, scary ground. There was some bad stuff that Amy and I had to cover, but just know Amy and I are uncancelable because if we said anything <laughs> bad, we don't truly mean it. <laughs> Right. I stand by my kitty litter comments as a cat advocate. And I stand by some of the stuff I said, <laughs> but nothing that was controversial or bad. So, and also think about Amy and I, how tired we are. Mm-hmm. When you're tired, you say stupid stuff. <laughs> We're bleary eyed. So I want to end this good episode, which I think is good. I'll give it a B plus in the moment. B plus, not an A, but a B plus. If you like this episode and you're loving Turtle Time, which we're doing good analytically, I don't want to toot our own (laughs) horn, but please, if you like this episode, the thing that helps us the most is reviewing Mm -hmm. it. And I'll say we don't like bad reviews for the most part, but five, four star good (laughs) reviews, that's like the sweet spot in terms of getting other people to listen. Yep. Rate, review, subscribe. Tell your friends. Yeah. This doesn't have to be just your secret, like... (laughs) Like, what's that called? Like, your niche that just you enjoy. Like, if you like it... Don't listen alone in the Chud Tunnel, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it doesn't have to have that experience. You could tell your friends and say, like, listen to this podcast. There, It's, like, really weird and kind <laughs> it's of weird bad. weird and kind of bad. <laughs> and also, they seem like they don't know what they're doing, and they just were in a studio for one episode. But regardless, tell your friends. Yeah. They might like it. And then lastly, or you say it, you say it. What? Oh, I was just gonna, I was going to say pat- <laughs> Patreon. Oh yeah, every week we get uh, for five dollars a month, you get four bonus episodes, one per week. We're recapping Vanderpump Rules from the very beginning, so you'll get the entire backlog. But we're currently on season four. Um, yeah. We just passed Pride, yes. um, where James had all those scratches and bites on his back, um, and it's really fun over there. Kind of kooky. Yeah. Sometimes we have a beer, we get the giggles, and it's- say shit we wouldn't say not behind a paywall. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the, you, when you hear Amy and I sort of uh, bite our tongues, we don't <laughs> bite tongues on Patreon. We say everything we want. We are in a great era of Vanderpump Rules. We're learning things that I think no one is talking about, like James getting the cops called on him on the same night that he got all those love bites, but no one has ever <laughs> talked about that again. Like We're yeah. uncovering new things. Yeah, we're revisiting, cross-examining with the podcast like the 400 Vanderpump podcasts and like watching with fresh eyes yes. and comparing to the new season, like when Tom and Ariana lied about Miami Girl. Yes. Um, we can see it all through a new lens, see Kristen through a new lens, see Ariana through a new lens, um, to see Tom through a new lens. Um, and that's also how we pay our bills. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think value wise, four episodes that are over an hour for $5 <laughs> a month. Come on. Yeah, this is always our PBS minute. We're like, please, your support today. 
But I, I do, I, you know, I, I know people are probably recapping Vanderpump Rules, but I feel like you and I are using all of our contemporary knowledge and expertise to analyze the past while referencing everything we know now. And it's a, yeah. it's a unique view of it. So I think it's worth it. Well all right, good. worth it. Okay, we love you so much. Little Turtle Cuties and Villa Rosa VIPs. Let us know how you like this episode and make sure to do those hashtags that we said. Skew to skewer, uh, Janet's, Janet uh, slander. And we love you so much. We're going to go to bed uh, and we love you. Good night. Bye.